Centricom, Channel 10 Sports, and Mid-Utah Radio, the sports leader in South Central Utah, now present another exciting high school football game broadcast. This sports broadcast is brought to you by sports-minded sponsors throughout South Central Utah. And now, let's go live to the football field for simulcast coverage of high school football on Mid-Utah Radio and Centricom Channel 10. Head. And uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Tim Few High School. Wade Hollingshead, Scott Langford here. And we're excited to bring you the second of the semifinal matchups. Of course, South Summit just defeated the Millard Eagles, and they've notched their fourth consecutive trip to the state championships. And now uh, the Beavers and the Grand Red Devils are facing off to see who will oppose them next week at Weber State. And uh, Wade, welcome. It's a beautiful day for football. We're 20 minutes from kickoff, and uh, the, the Devils and the Beavers. You know, Scott, it's a beautiful day for football. You know, Saturday's typically held for college football, but what a great day for some high school football today. And, and as you said, South Summit just notched their ticket, so we'll see who wins out of this Beaver and Grand County game today. So this, this game this afternoon between Grand County and Beaver, it's the number one and number three seeds out of the south. Interestingly, how the bracketing worked out this time, Wade, it was the one and three out of the north and then the one and three out of the south as they take on the, the <laughs> and so the number one prevails in the north, and now we're going to see what happens in the south. These two teams faced off earlier in the season down in Moab, and it was Grand County who had a convincing win against the Beavers 21-0. Yeah, you know, that was an interesting game. It was a tell of two halves, actually. Uh, both teams struggled the first half. A lot of turnovers, a lot of mistakes by uh, both squads, Beavers. Uh, and then South, uh, Grand County comes out in the second half, puts up 21 points in that third quarter, and ends up winning uh, 21 to nothing. Yeah, 21-0. It was a, it's a convincing win. And uh, the first semifinal featured two passing teams, the Millard Eagles and the South Summit Wildcats, and uh, this time it's two running teams, the Beavers and the Red Devils. We want to say a big thanks to all the sponsors who bring you high school football on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network as well as on Centricom.tv, and they are Sahara Motors, Smithfield Foods, Utah Independent Bank, Intermountain Power Service Corp., Centricom Channel 10, Zions Bank, Service Drug, National Vinyl Products, Central Valley Medical Center, and Snow College. And this is the Snow College pregame. Snow College was selected a top 10 college by the Aspen Institute three straight times. Turn on your education at snow.edu. And we do appreciate the, the Badgers and their support of high school football. So, Wade, as we take a look at this, at this matchup this afternoon, it is the, these are familiar foes and the, Let's talk about Grand County first as they finished top of the class in 2A South with a 4-1 region record. They actually tied with San Juan, but they take the number one seed as San Juan as they defeated San Juan that last game of the season. The Beavers come in 3-2 and two on the season. Overall, Grand is 7-3 and three and Beavers 8-3. and three. As we take a look at these two teams a little further, Grand has an experienced team. They've got some skilled players and uh, they've got some seniors. So the experience as far as the experience level goes to Grand County. Yeah, certainly knowing these types of games, experience seems to show through a little bit, and that kind of bodes in Grand's favor. Uh, Beavers are young, a lot of young players uh, uh, getting some good experience, and so we'll see if they can rise up to this uh, challenge today in this occasion. Well, and for Grand, we're, we're taking a look at some seniors, but we've got the quarterback for Grand is Brian Trout. He's a junior. His main running backs, Trent Elmore and Corbin Arbin, they are both – seniors and so he's he's got some good talent behind him elmore 110 rushes on the season 603 yards with five tds and then elmore also with 200 yards on the passing side and another two tds so total yardage for trent elmore 808 yards seven tds and he also plays on defense 40 tackles and an interception so the senior number eight for for grand is a talented addition to that team the quarterback brian trout a junior we'll keep an eye on him he was 152 Attempts rushing and almost 1,000 yards. Ended up with 872 on the season, and he accounted for 14 touchdowns. Corbin Arbin, who uh, slashed through the Beaver defense in that first meeting, added 705 yards and also had 20 yards receiving, so eight touchdowns for Arbin. So that's the three-headed dragon for the Grand County Red Devils, and uh, those three are talented individuals. Yes, very talented individuals. Plus, you got to give their credit to their line. Their line's big. They move well. They kind of disguise their plays. A lot of misdirections, so they are, you know, they're well, well coached offensively, and they're and they're just a good team. Now on the Beavers' side of the ball, just a few seniors, as you mentioned, the the Beavers' a very young team. They finished with that eight and three record, 
and uh, they've lost a cup. They lost a couple close games in region play, including one to San Juan. Um, they were up two touchdowns with with just a minute 51 left, and San Juan was able to come back and steal a victory away on Beavers' home field. And then, of course, the loss to Grand, the lone two blemishes in the Beavers' region record. The Beavers comprised mainly of sophomores and juniors with a couple seniors. One of those seniors is the uh, receiver, the leading receiver for the Beavers, and that's Spencer Williams. 43 catches on the season, almost 500 yards, and three touchdowns. Yeah, Spencer's had uh, you know, a great year. He's had a little bit of a tough year with injuries off and on. Uh, which has kind of uh, dampened him a little bit. So uh, it's good to see him back and playing well uh, this game, hopefully. For the Beavers, the quarterback junior, Riker Albrecht, and he, is, he accounts for a lot of yardage. He has almost 200 carries and 757 yards on the ground, 205 passing yards on the season, excuse me, 1,244 total on the season. So Riker Albrecht, the junior quarterback, has a total of 2,000 yards through the air. And on the ground, if you add up the 1244 and the 757, he accounted for 2,000 yards of, of overall yardage. Yeah, you know, certainly you state this team is young. Riker's a junior. He's, he's, he's evolved this year, and he's uh, gotten better with his passing and running a little bit. And so uh, we'll see how he handles the pressure today, too. So also at the running back position, Caleb Barney's had a strong second half of the season. And then also the sophomore, E.J. Allred, with 658 yards, 554 for Barney. And that's the three-headed dragon on the running side, Albrecht, Barney, and Allred. And then, of course, Williams with, with, uh, on the receiving side with Preston Roberts, the other senior for the Beavers. We'll take a timeout in our Snow College pregame and be back with a whole lot more after this. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. Azomite Mineral Products in Nephi is using a unique deposit to create fertilizers and as a feed ingredient for customers all over the world. Research has indicated its potential to improve overall animal health. Azomite is excited to be part of the Nephi community and supports Juab High School Athletics. Stevens Feed and Holden serves the surrounding communities in Millard County as well as farmers in central and southern Utah. They buy, sell, and haul alfalfa hay. You can be assured that you'll get the right price while receiving the service you deserve at Stevens Feed in Holden. Are you ready? Are you ready to save? Got my ride at Carwise and another great deal and another great deal. Another great deal is there. Hey, we're gonna get you approved. Come on in today. Got my ride at Carwise. They can get you approved and another great deal. Got my ride at Carwise. Are you ready? Are you ready to save? Come on in today. CarWiseUtah.com No matter how you connect, Centricom delivers fast, reliable internet and powerful whole home mesh Wi-Fi throughout your home for intense gaming, easy sharing, and buffer-free streaming on every device all at once. With experts ready to help, connect to faster internet Connect with Centra Wi-Fi. Connect to now. Call or click centracom.com to upgrade your internet today. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. Sahara Motors has vehicle deals too good to pass up. Ask for Cody Winnie and he'll show you that all new cars are priced to sell at invoice or below. Did I mention the awesome used car selection as well? Oh yeah, I just did. Get your vehicle running the way it should with Sahara Motors team of Ford and Chrysler certified vehicle technicians. Newsflash, service techs from all over the state call the Sahara crew for help. So cut out the middleman and bring it to the source. Sales or service, Sahara Motors in Delta leads the way. 
Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. We offer quick service on your loan request. We make our loan decisions right here at the bank. You don't have to wait for an answer from some out-of-town loan committee. It's one of the advantages of banking with hometown people. You're independent, so are we. Utah Independent Bank, member FDIC. Hometown people, hometown spirit. Welcome back to the Snow College pregame. Scott Langford, Wade Hollings head, and it's the 2A South semifinal matchup between the number one um, seed out of the South, Grand County Red Devils, and the number three seed, Beavers, from Beaver High School. Um, Snow College has a 73 successful transfer graduation rate with an average class size of 20. Visit snow.edu. They've got a great football program, too. It's kind of one of those feeder programs, and they, they put out some very talented players that go to some big-time programs. So take a look at snow at snow.edu. Yeah, it's great to have these sponsors that sponsor these high school kids and these high school teams. We appreciate all their their help and their uh, sponsor of these teams. Let's take a look at how both of these teams arrived in the semifinal matchup. First of all, Grand County, the number one seed, had to buy that first the first round, and then they defeated South Severe 28-21 in a game that was pretty close. And uh, both times they played, they they played a, a close matchup. Yeah, you know, I was watching, I was following that game on Desert uh, News uh, last week, and it was a close game both ways, back and forth. And both are running schools again, and yeah. and Grand coming on top, you know, 28-21, like you stated. The number three out of the South Beavers took on North Summit with an easy victory, 55-14 in the in the uh, interregion game. And then in the quarterfinals, the Beavers had a tall task to go over to Delta High School and take on the Rabbits and the number two seed out of the South. And they defeated the Rabbits fairly easily, 27-8. Beavers played a great game. Yeah, that was uh, probably one of the best games Beavers played all year, uh, pretty from top to bottom, uh, offensively and defensively. Had the one turnover which, which led to Delta's only score. And so that was a pretty much a dominating win by the Beavers. Yeah, since the year 2000, these teams have actually faced off 11 times, and the Beavers hold an 8-3 advantage. And uh, they met earlier in the season with Grand, as we mentioned before, the 21-0 victors. And uh, that game, there were six turnovers by the Beavers, four, four interceptions and two fumbles. And uh, nothing went right for the Beavers in that game on October the 5th. No, just a tough game down there in, in, in Grand, and uh, and like you state, a lot of turnovers, and that sh uh, plays a factor in the game. It's hard to win if you have that many turnovers for the Beavers. Yeah, with that 21 to zero win, Beavers snapped a excuse me, Grand snapped a seven game losing streak uh, against the Beavers, and uh, in playoff action, the only the only time these two teams have played since the year 2000 was at a 2A play play in game in 2009, and Grand easily defeated the Beavers 41-14. So this will be the next. Next time these two teams have faced off, I'm not sure, but I believe that might be the the year that Grand uh, played. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to. I think it goes back further than that. So, but anyway, Grand played. They had a great team yeah. a few years ago and uh, played against San Juan, another great team. And those two teams battled it out. So, yes. um, they defeated Gr Beaver 41-14 in 2009, and then the other time was 2007. They defeated the Beavers 49-8. Other than that, the Beavers with eight wins and Grand with three. Once again, this is a Snow College pregame. From first downs to touchdowns, Snow College is ranked 14th in student satisfaction with RateMyProfessor.com. Turn on your education at snow.edu. We'll send it back to the studio and more coming up on the Snow College pregame. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. No matter how you connect, Centricom delivers fast, reliable internet and powerful whole home mesh Wi-Fi throughout your home for intense gaming, easy sharing, and buffer-free streaming on every device all at once. With experts ready to help, 
Connect to faster internet. Connect with Centra Wi-Fi. Connect to now. Call or click centracom.com to upgrade your internet today. School is back in session, which means cold and flu season isn't far behind. Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore has flu shots available, and most insurances pay 100% of the cost. Service Drug also offers immunizations for shingles, pneumonia, whooping cough, and others upon request. So don't let the flu leave you on the sidelines this winter. Stop into Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore today to get your flu shot. Again, it's not too late. Get it today. And remember, it's service first at Service Drug. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasp the best of luck this season. Welcome back on the Snow College pregame. Snow offers the lowest tuition and fees in the Utah system of higher education. Start your education at snow.edu. We we've got a couple shout-outs we want to give as we take a look at some of the key players. One of those key players is number 13, McCoy Smith, and we know that their family is watching as uh, McCoy's dad is, is battling a health condition, and we just want to uh, give a big shout-out to uh, Chris Smith and wish him the very best. Absolutely. You know, we... Uh, keep his family in our you know, thoughts and prayers th this day and uh, hopefully enjoy the game. Yeah, it's just it's a reminder sometimes of what's important in life. And uh, sports are fun. They're important, but they're also fun. Also, a shout-out to uh, Connie Fells. I know she's watching on Local10.tv, so a big shout-out to my friend Connie. And also to Christine Pollard, who's watching from Salt Lake. Also some, some health concerns for, for her, but she's doing great. And since that's my mother, she I can say that. That's it's awesome. not even a HIPAA violation. <laughs> no, right? that's fine. You say whatever you want about that. And let me add one more to that, too. Uh, uh, Isaac Cortez, who's actually oh, a, a player on the Beaver High School team, uh, he's also battling some health issues, and so he is a player, and so his yeah. family, we – Wish them luck, and hopefully they're watching today also. So those four families that we know of, and anyone else who might be watching who's uh, struggling with a health health problem, we just want to make sure and, and wish you the very best. And with that, we'll talk about the Beaver Valley Hospital keys to the game. I had a chance to talk to Coach Matt Wells of Grand County before the game, and uh, Coach Wells said this is all about running the football. Both teams will, will, will have, have the need to establish the rush. Well, and that's absolutely what both schools want to do. Grand uh, so, uh, heavily on the run. They throw very, very few times, and so they want to dominate the line uh, and establish that run and, and uh, just wear the Beavers out like they kind of did down at Grand, I believe, in that yeah. second half. Beavers on the flip side, they use the run, uh, pass a little bit here and there, but uh, both teams got to minimize the mistakes and uh, see who comes on top. So the Beaver Valley Hospital keys the game, providing high-quality health care at a community hospital price, plus maternity, home health hospice, and more Beaver Valley Hospital. Big thanks to them. We're coming up on the South Creek Shell opening kickoff, offering everything from Burger King, this gas snacks, and over 1,200 tires in stock. South Creek Shell at the South Inter I-15 interchange in Beaver. And as we come up on this kickoff, it will be the Beaver Beavers who will kick off, and Grand will have the first crack on that offensive side of the ball. They will be defending the north, excuse me, the south end zone, and Beavers will kick out of the north. The field conditions, the right now just a slight breeze out of the north, not much at all, and it's a beautiful day of football for this semifinal matchup between the Beavers and Grand County. As we talk about the rushing, um, Wade, you can see the rushing touchdowns. Brian Trout for Grand, second in the 2A. And he has 14 on the season. Riker Albrecht just a little behind at 11, ranking number four. Corbin Arbin seventh. And EJ Allred for the Beavers with eight in the ninth position. So it's kickoff time here at Timview High School. Scott Lankford, Wade Hollingshead, glad to have you along. And here we go. The kickoff goes up. It's going to be taken short, taken at the 18-yard line. Now it's taken by number six, 
And he's going to get up past the 30-yard line. That's where Grand will start on the 34-yard line. Yeah, number 30, Brock Edwards comes up, makes that stop up there, and uh, the Grand takes over. So first down and 10, Brian Trout leads the Grand County Red Devils to the line. He wears number 15 and is a junior for Grand County. So good field position starting at the 34. Trout in the shotgun. Elmore with him. And Trout will keep it around that left side. Everybody to the left gets upended at the line of scrimmage. And a gain of about two, maybe three on the play. Yeah, it looks like EJ Allred is able to sneak in there from middle linebacker and make that stop. So Trout went airborne. And you don't necessarily want to see him take that kind of a fall, but he does pick up three on first down. Second down and seven for Grand. I think one of the things the Eagles land the high country Chevron first downs will be very important today. A trout again on that left side, and he's going to run into a pile. And another gain of about three yards on second down to bring up third down and about five. Yeah, there's kinda, four. they're trying to establish that run on that left side. It looks like uh, their left side, Beaver's right side. Big so trout four down there, sorry. Yeah, Trout picks up another three yards, so six yards already. On this first possession, four grand, 10.58 left. Just underway here, Timview High School. The previous game ran a little long. Trout in the shotgun. And it's go, balls on the ground, picked up by Arbin, and he's going to lose a, a few yards and a bad break for grand. Yeah, a little fumble there on the uh, change on the quarterback. He wasn't quite ready for it, I don't believe. And Brian Langston comes up and makes a good stop. So now it's a fourth down and about six yards, so two-yard loss, and that'll go to Arbin. And so punt formation for the Beavers. It'll be the Spider-Man, Spencer Williams, back to receive the punt, and here's the kick. Kick goes off the side of the foot, and it's going to be a very short punt. Goes inside the 40, and that's where the Beavers will start. So third down conversion, 0 for 1 for Grand. So the... Grand County punts on their first possession, so the Beavers' defense holds. Now Grand will have a chance to give Beaver the same opportunity. The starting field position a little bit better for the Beavers. They start at their own 39-yard line. Beavers led by junior quarterback Riker Albrecht in the backfield will be Barney, and it's going to be an option pitched out. Oh, over the head of the, of the running back, and he'll go down at the 28-yard line. So a mistake on first down, big loss for the Beavers. Yeah, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, field position. Now you had a good field position. Now you just lost that. And uh, certainly, you know, nerves a little bit for both squads. We'll see with how things settle down here. Yeah, so a loss of nine officially goes to all red. And so the Beavers with a, you know, it's a loss of 11. So 11 yards on the, on the loss. So the Beavers with a first, second down and 21. The ball's all the way back to the 28-yard line. Two receivers to the left for the Beavers. Roberts and Williams. Albrecht around the left side. He gets hit in the backfield. Not much there. A gain of two or three on second down. It'll be third and very long. Yeah, just heavy pursuit by Grand County there. Not a lot of room there. And they, uh, just a great, uh, great read by them. So third down long. The Beavers do have a passing attack and can pass. Um, reminder against, the, against Grand County last, the last time these two teams faced off, there were four interceptions by, that forced by Grand County. So the Red Devils are on this. Edwards and Williams split to the left. Albrecht will be in the shotgun with Barney in the backfield. Albrecht back to pass, looking left. Now switches to his right. Has a wheel pass. Wide open receiver and overthrown. It'll be fourth down. And uh, Caleb Barney, the intended receiver. Yeah, just a little long there on the pass there. And uh, he was wide open, as you state. So the first pass of the game is an incompletion. And it'll bring up fourth down. McCoy Smith is the punter for the Beavers. So the so both defenses hold on the first possession. We'll see what the field position switch ends up being. Smith, a junior, will punt from 20 yard. I know the ball bounces, takes a favorable bounce, is up. A nice high kick, fair caught at the 36 yard line. So not much change in field position. That's where Grand will take over. You know this game is was probably going to be made up to be a defensive battle a little bit. So we'll. Uh, See which one team's ben, team bends or doesn't bend and holds on. 
So 37 yard line is where Grand will start. First down and 10. 841 left in this first. That's the DSA Cash Valley Cheese scoreboard. Get the best and freshest cheese products direct from the factory. Gifts and more at the Chalet at DFG, DFA Cash Valley. No score yet here in this one. Trout in the shotgun. Arbor, Arbin in motion. Hands off up the middle. This is to Elmore, and he'll gain about four or five yards on first down. Yeah, right at the middle there. Looks like Kel Legault gets in on that tackle. So a gain of five on first down. And both of these teams want, that first down is a critical down for both of these teams, a single wing for, for Grand. And they basically, both teams need four to five yards on that first down because it keeps the playbook in a comfortable position. As they want to churn it out, four or five, they'll take it every down. Absolutely, and it lets them allow them to, you know, like I say, call any play they want. Trout, hands, keeps it himself as he pulls it and forward near first down yardage and he'll gain Looks like about four. It'll be third and short for the Red Devils. Actually, they're going to give him the first down. So he does get five on the spot on this side. So five yards for Trout and the first down for Grand. Ball nearing midfield. The ball's currently at the 47-yard line. One receiver's to the right. Trout will throw occasionally, but it's pretty much rushing for Grand County. First and 10. Elmore will switch sides. Now down up to Arbin. Arbin comes against the grain on the left side. Short gain on first down, and it'll be second down coming up. Yeah, Hunter Hapen in there on that tackle on that. Doesn't just stays his ground, doesn't let him get out wide, and makes a good tackle. So it'll be second down and nine. Just a reminder, we're going to have a Mike's Food Town player of the game at the end of this one. And visit your friendly hometown grocer showcasing the choicest cuts of meats and fresh, crisp produce every day. Mike's Food Town in Beaver. Second down, nine yards to go. Receiver's put to the right is Stacy Randall, a senior for Grand. And now Trout back to pass. Roy to his right has an open receiver caught. And near a first down, about the four into Beaver territory at the 44 yard line. Yeah, one of the times they pass and catches uh, just a great pass by Trout to get hit number 40. Uh, Christopher Thompson for this pickup. Eight yards, it looks like. So Thompson with the first reception. And he does pick up about eight yards. Third down, one to go on the first pass play for Grand. And if, if Grand can use passes here and there, it'll soften up the defense. Very effective. Arbin in motion. It's Trout following his linebacker, his blockers. And he'll get first down yardage, gain of about four. And it'll be a first down. And one of those important first down, third down conversions also. Yeah, once again, they're just going to establish the run, going to kind of be patient there and uh, find a hole and picks up enough for the first down. So already four rushes in the game for Brian Trout, the junior quarterback for Grand County. Grand County into Beaver territory on the move. Trout stays in the shotgun with Elmore. And Trout keeps himself... Makes a nice move in the backfield to avoid losing yards and will have a short gain on first down. That could have been disastrous, but he made a nice adjustment. Yeah, he's quick. He uh, was able to elude that first uh, defender there, and he was uh, tackled there by Talon Langston. Still no score, 623 left in the first. And in the previous semifinal matchup between South Summit and Millard, it was one of the longest games of the season as they both passed, and so the clock was stopped a lot. And uh, this one, the game will go much quicker. Second down and seven. Four grand. Elmore with Trout, and there'll be a flag on the play. And I'm not sure if this will be a delay like of game. False start. So a false start against Grant. So the first penalty of the game goes against Grand County. So the Red Devils now will have a second down and 13. The ball moved back to the 43-yard line. Next week's game, next the winner of this game will take on the South Summit Wildcats at Weber State University next week. Be a lot, a lot of fun to watch. Shotgun for Trout. Arbin in the slot. Now it's going to be a double handoff back. Flea Ficker back to Trout. Trout throws the ball up. Good coverage for the Beavers, and the receiver ends up, and it was going to be Elmore, but the receiver ended up pulling down the defender as uh, Beaver watched that one carefully. Yeah, nobody filled on that one for the Beavers uh, and had that play well covered. So it'll be third down and 13 for Grand. 
Yeah, substitutions for the Beavers. Now the play clock is interesting because the play clock a little different and a timeout. This is a Fish Lake Lumber timeout. Tackle a fix-it project or just stock up on IFA Animal Feed and Ace Hardware Supplies all at Fish Lake Lumber in Beaver. So it's our first time out of the game. We'll be back after this. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. So a quick stat look sponsored by the State Farm Assurance Stat Check, Brent Stapley, the agent for State Farm. And uh, so far in the game, rushing yards 22 for the Red Devils and a total of 30 yards with eight yard pass, minus nine for the Beavers on that mistake on the option. So with a third down and 12 or 13, Trout will hand off to Arbin around that left side. Arbin cuts up and he'll get you know, about five yards. It'll be fourth down and long and decision time. I'm guessing four down territory for Grand. Yeah, certainly right here, uh, you know, you've kind of controlled the line of scrimmage and you might not gain a lot by punting it away, so. In the first matchup between these two teams, Arbin had in the early in the second half had a long run um, from scrimmage as he broke on that same play around the left side. The Beavers stayed home on that one, fourth down and long. So the offense on the field, Trout in the shotgun with Elmore. Arbin in the slot. Now Arbin back to pass, excuse me, Trout back to pass. Rolling, he's right under heavy pressure. Has a receiver, it's dropped, and the Beavers hold. Yeah, it's kind of better that he did drop that, actually, because he was well covered and he would have lost yardage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for them, it's actually better, Dale. So the Beavers hold and they get the ball back. So the Beavers' defense, both defenses have done a great job. We're back at the 37-yard line. So just flip-flopping the starting yardage for these two teams, 34, 39, 37, 37. So not a lot of movement. Um, and this will be the second possession for the Beavers. No score, five minutes left in the first quarter of play, and it will be Riker Albrecht in the shotgun. In motion will be Allred. Option around the left side. Pitch out to Allred. Allred picks up a block, makes a nice move. 50 down the 45, 40. Allred 30 yard line, 25, 20. One man to beat him inside the 10. Allred goes down at the nine. Yeah, just a great play, and that was uh, that had by that block on that uh, wide receiver right here. I got to catch his number. Might have been Kai Brown, but that sprung the that run right there for uh, Allred. On the replay, you can take a look at that. Actually, that was Caleb Barney, the running back, comes so, out and picks up that great block. So the Beavers with a first and goal, ball on the 10-yard line. That was a 52-yard run by E.J. Allred, the sophomore, and the Beavers in business. Albrecht rolls to the right, follow, following blockers. He'll gain maybe one or two on first down. It'll be second goal from the eight. Yeah, just, just tough movement on that line for Grand County. They're big up front and not, not a lot of space there for Albrecht on that run. Now they do a, a great job up front, do the Red Devils. So that was a first down for the Beavers on that long run. 4.22 left in the first, and the ball is on the nine, so it was only a gain of one for Albrecht. Split out to the left will be Williams. Barney will split out. Timeout, Fish Lake Lumber. Drive a little, save a lot of Fish Lake Lumber. We'll be back after this. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Welcome back, Scott Langford, Wade Hollingshead, and Nate Palmer, who's he's in charge of all the replays. We appreciate Nate, a good friend of high school football in the 2A South. Four minutes left in the first quarter of play. It's the Beavers with second goal on the nine. And of course, a long rush by EJ Allred on the option. 52 yards put the Beavers in scoring position. Albrecht in the shotgun with the second goal. Motion for Allred, and there was a motion. That'll be a five yard penalty on the Beavers. Yeah, the whole right side seemed to jump just a hair early. Yeah, and uh, we know that the Beavers have struggled with penalties all season long. And in the red zone, not a time that you can afford five-yard penalties. 
you know, this is kind of what happened in Grand County a little bit. They get down to score and they make some mistakes and just loses your momentum. So now it'll be second goal from the 14 yard line and bringing the play from the sideline. It'll be Roberts and Williams split out to the left. Albrecht in the shotgun. Albrecht back to pass, rolling to his left. And he's going to get hit and go down deep. Big loss on the play. Sack for Grand County. Yeah, number 34 just shoots right in there. Braden Trout and is untouched. And uh, Albrecht has nowhere to go with the ball. Yeah, it didn't have time. First one to hit him was number 34. And uh, Braden Trout there. Now Trout unavailable in the last game due to injury. And so this is his first game back. And, and he makes a big contribution there, the junior, for Grand County. So... It goes from the 14 back to the 25, loss of 11 for Albrecht. Yeah, making his presence known already in this ballgame. So there's a third and goal from the 25, wait. <laughs> Albrecht in the shotgun, passing situation. Albrecht back to pass under pressure already. And it's going to be a screen pass. It will go out of bounds, incomplete. And now the Beavers will, will decide field goal or... Go for the touchdown. Looks like the field goal unit will come out. So this will be a 42-yard field goal attempt. That's a long attempt for the sophomore, Bartlett. Yeah, not a lot of wind at your back. Maybe a little bit to push that ball that direction. Still in Bartlett, the sophomore for the Beavers. He has hit a 42. This would match his season long for Beaver High School. 320 left in the first. Holder, we trace in Hunter. The kick is up and it's short, and it's going to be blocked. So it was actually blocked at the line of scrimmage, and the Beavers come up empty. So a blocked field goal. And so Grand will start, I believe, I'm trying to see where, where it will start. I believe it starts on the 20 as a touchback. So Grand holds the Beavers, and the Beavers down with a first and goal on the 10. Can't convert. Yeah, that's a, that's a great stop by Grand, Grand County because that uh, shows their determination there, and that's a tough tough one for the Beavers on the flip side because you, you know, to win a ball game, especially this big, you got to convert those plays. So still no score in the second semifinal matchup as both these teams try to notch their berth into the state championship game next weekend, South Summit. Trout with a rush up the middle hit, breaks a tackle into the secondary, and he picks up six on first down. Yeah, Tracy Hunter from the safety position comes up and makes that tackle, which is not a good sign for the Beavers, but a great sign for Grand County. That's a positive yardage for them. Trout with now 24 yards in this first quarter. 2.55 left and a second down and five. That's a long four, but we'll call it six. So six-yard rush by Trout. Trout stays in the shotgun. And we'll hand off to Elmore on the left side. Elmore picks his way forward, follows his line near first down yardage. Hard to say who's in on that tackle. There's a host of Beavers there. Looks like McCoy Smith in on there. So Elmore with three yards. Now eight yards in the quarter. Third down and one. 224 and counting left in the first quarter. Big offensive front for Grand. They have they do a good job of owning the line of scrimmage, and they've got some size and some ability on the, on the line of scrimmage. Trout stays in the shotgun. He'll roll to his left. Hit immediately, and he gets... Grambles for it across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. And it'll be a first down, three-yard gain. Yeah, his second effort there, he spins and gets that first down, so it allows him to um, pick yeah. it up. As you watch the replay, the, the line did a great job of, of maintaining their blocks. Trout actually ran over one of his home players, which tripped him up, and uh, scrambles for it for another first down for Grand County. Just under two minutes left in this first quarter of play. And it'll be Trout in the shotgun with Elmore again at his side. Trout keeps himself, rolls on the left side, has an open lane, and breaks one tackle, gain of three on first down. Yeah, I can't, you know, once again, a bunch of holes, misses a tackle there, and then yeah. uh, three, three Beavers uh, end up uh, making that tackle. It's like Hunter Hafen and gets in on it. Yep, Hunter Hafen with the tackle for Grand. Excuse me, for Beaver. And a second down and seven. 27 yards for the quarterback. Brian Trout. Hands off now to Elmore. Elmore on left side. Breaks, spins out of one tackle. And into positive yardage. Gain of three on second down. 
Elmore didn't look like he was gain, gonna gain any yards, but then with the spin move, as he was hit by Riker Albrecht, spun around, and then finally tackled by Allred. And it looks like Hafen again on the tackle. Yeah, on the tackle, you know, but it, this uh, play clone now allows Grant because they only got three yards to go. They can call pretty much any play they want again, so they're right where they want to be. Under 50 seconds left in this first quarter. Grand with a third down and three. Again, Trout takes the shotgun snap back. And he'll, it's a double reverse to Arben. Arben around left side. He's got a hole and breaks a tackle and another tackle. And Arben's going to get across Beaver territory down inside the 45-yard line. Yeah, just a great run by Arben. This is the play they scored on down in Grand a couple times. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of their favorite plays in this situation, I think. And they see some efforts there to score there. And they almost broke that one. Yeah, Arben was 17 yards on that carry. Moves the ball down to the 44. And uh, Arben, he'd like to be one of the players of the game, or if he gets another long run, it could, he could have the Coldwell Banker key play of the game for expert real estate and accounting services called Gary Brown at Coldwell Banker Advantage Realty, Majestic Financial Services. First and 10 for Graham. Another first down for the Red Devils. Uh, and it's Elmore with a lot, wall of blockers. He cuts back. He had the outside, decided to cut it up, up inside. He ended up with three. It might have been a whole lot more had he continued around the outside. Yeah, it looked like that was pretty well contained. Now, he may have just went away, all the way down for a touchdown. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. Grand in Beaver territory when we come back. Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. We offer quick service on your loan request. We make our loan decisions right here at the bank. You don't have to wait for an answer from some out-of-town loan committee. It's one of the advantages of banking with hometown people. You're independent, so are we. Utah Independent Bank, member FDIC. Hometown people, hometown spirit. At the end of one, no score. Grand with the ball, second down seven. Arben in motion, and it's going to be Elmore up the middle. Great blocking by Grand, and he'll get a first down or near to it. Gain of seven on second down. Yeah, great run up the middle there. He's actually brought down by uh, Alex Hollings at number 12 for the Beavers. And it is a first down, so first and 10 for Grand. They move the ball down to the Beaver 34-yard line. And the blocking, the blocking on that one was was exceptional. You can see the offensive line with a great surge. So Grand comes to the line with Trout in the shotgun. El Arben in motion, hands off to him up the middle, follows blockers, and he'll be hit at the line of scrimmage after gaining about four yards. You know, Grand's perfectly fine with that. They get, you know, get four yards, and they just can continue to pound the line, and and be patient here. Well, and this is Grand's game. I mean, it's this is what they want to do, mix it up a little bit. Take a look at this. In this first quarter for a State Farm Insurance stat check, Elmore with 21 yards, 30 yards for Brian, Bryant Trout, and Corbin Arbon with 25. Three-headed so, monster that you mentioned earlier are yeah. doing it. 76 yards rushing in the first half so far. Second down and six. Trout stays in the shotgun, same formation. Arben in motion, and it's Trout around the right side. Again, good blocking. Trout runs into his own guy, bounces off, gain of three. It'll be third down. Yeah, it looks like he ran around his own guy and knocked him over and then was able to get stood up by the Beavers after that. So Trout with his ninth rushing attempt, gains three. Third down, three yards to go for Grand. Another third down opportunity. So 10-31 left in this first half. Grand marching. The Beavers march down to the Grand nine-yard line. They were, not, were unable to convert. Now Grand with an opportunity inside the Beaver 30 at the 27. Motion for Arben, and Trout will keep it, follow a wall of blockers, student body left, and great blocking on the outside. Trout will go for the touchdown. Actually, no, he he's going to go out, he step out, out at the three. Yes, he did. So 24 yards for Bryant Trout as he dove in. Let's take a look. Boy, a wall of blockers. 
And a great seal blocker downfield by Elmore. Really can, got the corner, and he was pushed out of bounds by Fairhurst. Well, you know, he, kind of, he looks like he's kind of going inside, and he busted out there, and it's just, just too many people on the road. You can't, get, you can't find him. So first and goal on the four after that 24-yard run by Bryant Trout, and he'll be in the shotgun. Trout takes the snap, rolls to his left, then his right, gets inside the five, down to about the three, and he'll gain about at one yard on that carry. Looks like he was stopped there by uh, Talon Langston in the middle there. So Langston, the sophomore middle linebacker for the Beavers. The Talon, second goal at the three. Talon's actually the senior. Oh, Talon's the senior. Yes. Brighton Langston, Brighton, younger Brighton's brothers, the middle linebacker. Yep. So it'll be Trout staying in the shotgun. Elmore now on his left. Trout rolls to his left, follows the blockers, trips and falls, and he, he might get back line of scrimmage. I think he's going to lose one yard. He will lose one yard on the carry. Yeah, he's like, man, I had an open lane there and just cut, cut on his own toes and down uh, he went. We've seen that a couple times with this different turf. Team's not used to it. Saw that in the South Summit yes. Millard game as well. So third and goal for Grand at the three, at the four rather. No score yet, 9-14 left in the first half of play. Trout, hands off to Elmore, now to Arben. Arben hit it, the line of scrimmage, backed up, and he will gain a yard, but it'll be fourth and goal and decision time for Grand County. Yeah, that play is blown up there by Talon Langston because he slows him up and doesn't allow him to get, his, mm -hmm. get, get going on there, and then, then the whole speed can get up to him. So Coach Matt Wells has a decision to make. Does he go for the field goal or continue on? Looks like the field goal unit is on. And it'll be number 24, Dante Wells, the sophomore, who, who will kick four grand. So if successful, this will be a 21-yard field goal. And the holder, can't see the number on the holder. Snap is back, bounces off the turf. The ball's loose on the turf, and it will go oh. down. So the Beavers hold on the botched field goal attempt. So officially it goes as a turnover on downs on fourth down. Yeah, both teams are thinking their points are precious here, and they're not, neither one of them are able to convert the first half. So Elmore picks that ball up, but loss of three on the play, and so the Beavers hold, and they get the ball back. And they'll get it, officially they'll get it where it ended, which was on the 11-yard line. So both teams really holding. So Downs. Albrecht in the shotgun, and he'll follow his blockers around that right side. Hit very hard across the 10. Not much on that one, a gain of one. Yeah, just a whole host of Grand County there to uh, leading with number 17, Austin Johnson on the tackle. Albrecht, the leading rusher for the Beavers this season, and uh, Grand doing a good job on that front front line. <coughs> they got some big kids, Trey Mayer, and number 58, Jarrett Reedhead. 17's out there, Austin Johnson. And there's one other player, 52 I think, is Clint Backus. So here's Albrecht, under center now with a second down and nine. And he'll follow blockers around that left side. He's hitting the backfield again, loss on the play of one. And Grand doing a great job on the defense. Elmore on the tackle. Yeah, they're just pursuing really hard and not allowing Beavers to get any momentum going offensively at this point. So third down and 10 after the loss of one. And this is reminiscent of what is what was seen in the first matchup between these two. The Beavers unable to run, turned to the pass with all of the interceptions. Yeah, Scranton's kind of, you know, their, their front line is uh, kind of dominating both sides of the field right now. Right now, total yards for the Beavers, 33, 109 for Grand. That's your State Farm Insurance stat check. Albrecht in the shotgun. Back to pass, looking to his right. Has a receiver, Roberts. Roberts across the 20, near first down yardage, and he is going to get a gain of 11 on third down. That's a third down conversion for the Beavers. Yeah, a big third down conversion there for the Beavers with uh, Preston Roberts catching that ball and able to get the little space there for the Beavers. So the Beavers move the ball out to about the 22-yard line, first down and 10. No score yet. 6.51 left in the half. Albrecht in the shotgun. And he'll option to the left side, pitch out to Allred. Allred with a nice block around the left side, has yardage, and first down yardage for the Beavers. Yeah, I think that's the kind of play they ran before to get that big big run play mm -hmm. and uh, was able to pick up the first down. So it will be a gain 
All the way out 32, gain of 11 for Allred. Allred in the game already with 52 yards rushing. And he, only Bryant Trout has more in the game for Red Devils. And now Albrecht under center. Albrecht, hands off on the left side. Here's Allred again. Allred, bruising runner, breaks a tackle. Five or six on first down. Yeah, able to get off that left side and pick up five or six, which is, you know, a good first down play. Yeah, good block in Allred. Runs hard, gains a couple just by pushing through the block. Gain of six for Allred. A couple missed tackles there by the Grand County. So it'll be second down and four. 6.07 left in the second quarter, no score. The winner takes on South Summit with a 34-10 victory against the Millard Eagles in the first semifinal matchup. Albrecht under center. Option on the right side. Pitch out to Allred. Allred will, oh, take it out hard after a gain of two as two Red Devils pounded the sophomore to the turf. Yeah, number 40 comes up big time. Christopher Thompson and just hits him hard. Yeah, flag on the play in the area of holding. We'll see what happens. And it looks like it is against the Beavers. I believe this will be a holding call and a, one, another one of those costly penalties. We'll see what the call is. Block in the back against the Beavers. So, so that will nullify the run and move the ball back 10 yards. And uh, that's another one of those unfortunate penalties that the Beavers have struggled with. 15 yards penalty so far in the first half. 551 left in the second quarter of play. Still no score. The ball's on the Beaver 30 yard line. So the Beaver's facing a second down and 13. So rather than a third and four, uh, second and second down and and 13 to go. You know, it always makes it really difficult when you get penalties to to uh, win ball games. They talk about penalties being momentum killers. Hunter Carter in the backfield now. And Albrecht back to pass, has a pass away to the Spider-Man, Spencer Williams. Oh, knocked away, great job by Grand. As you, and for those of you watching on Centricom, you can see the, the bobble, the pass is high. Yeah, Austin Johnson's in on that coverage there, just plays, just knocks it out of his hand. He has it for a minute, Yeah, can't keep, keep it to the, to the turf. Well, Johnson did, what Johnson did is he put his hands between the two hands of Williams and then stripped up as Williams was coming down. No chance for Williams to corral that one. It'll be a third down. Albrecht, one for four in the game for 11 yards. It's a big third down for the Beavers. Back to pass. Albrecht under heavy pressure, and he's going to slip the pressure, and there's going to be a flag on the play, kind of a free play, and there's Barney waiting and uh, knocked away, and it's going to be a face mask against Grand, so the Beavers still in business. Yeah, if he's able to get that ball up in the air, that's probably a touchdown there, but just uh, not enough uh, momentum on his legs to throw that pass. Yeah, Barney by himself. I think it's an automatic first down. And so a five-yard penalty. Five-yarders. So I, I think it's just third down. I do not believe that five yards is an automatic first down. So it'll be third down, seven yards to go for the Beavers. Another chance at this one. And Albrecht hit as he threw, but he did. He had Barney about seven, eight yards downfield ahead of everyone else. And the ball floated just a bit. So third down and seven with the ball now on the 35. The Beavers have to get to the 42. And we'll also have a Timberland in sub of the game. Offering fine dining and a catering service. Timeout. And that's officially Lake Lumber timeout. We'll take it as well. 5.18 left and a half Beavers with a third and seven when we come back. It's time to supercharge your internet with the fastest speeds in the area from Centricom. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by Centra Wi Fi, our whole home mesh Wi Fi system. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Call or click Centricom.com to supercharge your internet today. School is back in session, which means cold and flu season isn't far behind. Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore has flu shots available, and most insurances pay 100% of the cost. Service Drug also offers immunizations for shingles, pneumonia, whooping cough, and others upon request. So don't let the flu leave you on the sidelines this winter. Stop into Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore today to get your flu shot. Again, it's not too late. Get it today. And remember, it's service first at Service Drug. Down yardage taken down short, and now decision times for the Beavers. Gain of five. It'll be fourth down and one for Beaver High School. 
Yeah, that's a tough call here for the viewers. What do you do here? I mean, you mean uh, Grant's kind of established the run game and looks like he's going to punt. Yeah, probably conventional wisdom says says the punt. As we take a look at the rushing for the Beavers, there there have been some losses, and uh, Grant's defensive line has been great. So they will go ahead and punt the ball away, and it'll be McCoy Smith. Another shout out to Chris, but McCoy Smith now will go away from punt formation, and they'll have Hunter Hafen at quarterback. And they might try to draw off Grand. And it looks like there will be a, a delay of game by the Beavers. So the switch of the, but there was a big jump by Grand. They did a great job of not crossing the line of scrimmage, but it will be putt formation, I'm guessing, for the Beavers, another five yard penalty for the men in blue and white. Yeah, I see if you can kind of get them to jump offside right there, but they held true and yeah. didn't do it. Smith back to punt, he'll punt from his 22 yard line. The snap is a good snap, back to Smith. Smith will kick the punt, it goes down to the 40 and takes a, a, a grand bounce back, then another Beaver bounce inside the 30 yard line at the 27. And that's where Grand will start. So, so far it's been a defensive battle between these two teams. Both teams have had an opportunity, but neither able to convert. And uh, take a look at this, the, the Grand in their possessions has been a punt, turnover on downs, and then another turnover on downs, and then a, and then the Beavers with a punt blocked field goal, and then another punt. So neither teams really asserted themselves. No score yet in the first half, with 4:22 left in this in this half. It's like deja vu, right <laughs> over again there. It certainly is. So Grand with a first down and 10 from the 21 yard line, and it's going to be Arbin, and he's going to be taken down from behind by the Beavers, and that will be Langston. Yeah, Langston sneaks in there and gets in there behind because he had a wall of blockers coming at him again. Mm -hmm. Boy, that, that student body left or right is quite a, quite a sight when you see that sea of red coming. And that time Langston from the backside, loss of three for Arbin. Arbin with 29 yards rushing in the game. So second down and 13. Clock running just under four minutes left in the second quarter. No score from Tim Few High School, the 2A South semifinal matchup between the number one Seed Grand and the number three Beavers. Trout in the shotgun, hands off to Elmore. Now to Arvin, back to pass, the flea flicker pass. And it's gonna be out and immediately caught. The ball's coughed up, incomplete. What a big hit by the defensive back. Yeah, just a great play there by Alex Hollings. He reads that all the way as he makes a good hit and pops that ball right out. Yeah, that's the second time that little flea flicker pass has been with the double handoff then back to Trout. Neither time did the Beaver defenders bite. And now a third down and 13. Clock stopped with 3.35 left in the first half. So substitutions for the Beavers. Speaking, this is gonna be a pass play. Elwell now will split out to the, Elmore will split out to the left. And Trout alone in the backfield. Timeout by the Grand County Red Devils. We'll take it as well. And Fish Lake Lumber timeout, drive a little, save a lot. We'll be back after this 30 second break. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. Welcome back. Scott Langford, Wade Hollings had 335 left in the half, and as you mentioned, it is going by very fast. And uh, now it'll be Trout in the shotgun. And same formation with Elmore split to the left and a receiver to the right. Back to pass, Trout looking over the middle. Does a pump fake, now the ball is up, good coverage, and it's gonna go out of bounds, and an incompletion, fourth down and long for Grand. Yeah, just good coverage there by the Beavers, not, not a lot there for uh, Trout, and just threw it up there and hoping something would happen. Yeah, good coverage by Creighton Hollingshead for the Beavers. And so now it'll be a punt formation for Grand. The punt will go from the 10 yard line, and it looks like it's Dante Wells who will do the kicking for the Red Devils. Snap is low, but fielded well. Wells with the kick. Nice, beautiful kick. Turns over. It's going to be Williams taking it back at the 32-yard line. Williams slips one tackle and is outruns another. Cuts back around the side. Hit high and down at across the 45-yard line. 
Yeah, good wow. return by Spencer. Hit real hard but there by number 81, Bailey Shelton. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, that was a D cleater. Yes. So the Beavers with good field position at, the, at their own 47-yard line as we come down to the end of the second quarter play. 3.15 left in this first half. Two receivers to the left, and it'll be Albrecht under center with Allred behind him. Hand off to Allred. Allred pushes his way forward. Gain of five yards on first down for E.J. Allred. Yeah, it's at the middle there off the right side. Tackled by number 58, Jarrett Reedhead. Jarrett Reedhead for Grand. So, probably a short five. Gain of four is probably more like it. So gain of four on first down. And the clock running. 2.54 left in the half, the Beavers. You know, it's kind of a dual strategy. The Beavers are running team, and they can pass. Albrecht under center, and he'll hand off. This one to Barney. Barney around the right side. Hit immediately. Gain of two on the play. Yeah, just, just heavy pursuit there by Grand County once again. And, uh, you know, one or two yards there. Stopped by number 17, Austin Johnson. Yeah, Barney did a good job of, of getting the two yards and uh, good penetration by the linebacking crew of Grand County. Now 222 and counting left. In the first half, third down and four for the Beavers. Split out to the left is Edwards and Williams. And Albrecht in the shotgun with Barney in the backfield. Snap comes back, back to pass. And it's going to be Albrecht, and it's going to be over the head of the intended receiver. Fourth down coming for the Beavers. Yeah, just a tough pass by there. Well, you know, just well covered once again. And so Beavers are forced to uh, punt again. Well, and it was an overthrow, but you had Trent Elmore who was sitting right between the Albre Albrecht and the receiver. And that pretty much forced Albrecht to throw that one away. So, so far in the game, Albrecht one out of five for 11 yards. And another third down conversion not, not completed. And it'll be Smith back. Snap is up. Good snap. And the kick is up. A high kick and fair, care, fair, fair catch called inside the 20. And I'll be at the 19. That possession was very fast for the Beavers. So it's a punt. Yeah, either team just is having a hard time establishing offensively their uh, domination and, uh, and just kind of struggling uh, to just kind of get things going. Let's have a couple of big plays. Yeah, so good defense so far for these two teams. And defense has been the name of the game. The Beavers, the second, actually the leading defensive team in the 2A classification. And uh, very good against the run with that one exception, the game against Grand County earlier. And Grand one of the leaders in offensive production. So the Red Devils have a minute 58 left in this first half. Trout hands off to Elmore. Elmore back to pass. And he'll throw a, he'll launch one up. Has a receiver and it's going to go over the, over the head of the intended receiver. And uh, wow, Elmore, he showed some, an arm there. Yeah, he had a great arm right there in the, uh, the uh, uh, his receiver was actually two steps beyond the Beavers defenders there, and so they had a chance. So Trent Elmore gets in the quarterback stats with his first incompletion, and uh, that was a, a very well-thrown ball with a tight spiral. Intended for number 32, Stacy Randall, the leading receiver's four grand. So second down and 10. Clock stopped at a minute 50 in the second quarter. Still no score on your DFA Cash Valley Cheese scoreboard. Trout in the shotgun, takes a snap, hands off, and it's Arben around this right side. Nice block by Trout. Arben has a big lane, and he's going to go out of bounds across the 35-yard line, and a big gain. Yeah, great great block there by Trout. Actually comes up and makes a good black block on the end there, and it's bringing him to get the big yardage. Yeah, Creighton Hollingshead took a big block. So that goes from the 19 out to the 37, so 18 yards for Arben. And so Grand with a minute 42, clock stopped. After the out of bounds. And Grand would like to, it'll be Beavers who have the ball in the second half to start. So Grand would like to do something. So clock stopped, minute 42. Here's Trout, first and 10. Trout back to pass, rolling to his right under some pressure. He's gonna get the pass away, overthrown. And it'll be a second down and 10. Clock stopped with a minute 37 left. We yeah, talked. Go, go ahead, ahead, Wade. Well, I was going to say they figured they don't have enough time to run the ball much, so they're trying to get a little pass play here and there and see if they can score some points for the end of the half. Well, we talked about the Beaver Valley Hospital keys to the game, and we talked about, you know, establishing the rush. Neither team has really been, been effective at establishing that rush. 
in the game. We've had some big plays, but not, not a consistent you know, rushing attack for either team. Second down and 10 for the Grand County Red Devils. Trout in the shotgun, Arbin in motion, and there'll be Trout rolling on this left side. Breaks one tackle across near the 50-yard line. He'll be down inbounds as he gets near midfield at the 50. Yeah, Trout's just running really hard, and he's just going to run through tackles unless you uh, put some uh, body on him. 13 yards for the junior. And it'll be another first down and 10. The clock running with a minute 28 left. Time of the essence for the Grand County Red Devils. Halftime coming up in about a minute. Trout rolls to the right this time into a wall of blockers. Short gain, and that'll be a gain of two for Trout. And a timeout being called by Grand. We'll take a 30-second break and be back with the end of the first half after this. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasp the best of luck this season. Welcome back, Scott Langford, Wade Hollingshead, Nate Palmer here from Timview High School with a minute nine left. That was the last time out for Grand, and they've got 48 yards. They're inside Beaver territory at the 48, and still no score in this one. This is a low-scoring affair, and that'll be your State Farm Insurance stat check. Second down and eight, and Trout stays in the shotgun with Elmore in the backfield. Trout, double hand off to Arbin around the left side. Arbin runs around the corner, and it'll be Arbin stepping out at the 40-yard line. That'll be a gain of 10. Clock stopped after the 10-yard gain. Yeah, just able to get that corner there, and just uh, he's, he's a nifty runner and just uh, gets around that edge and picks up the first down. So in the last four rushes, we've had rushes of 13, 18, and 10. Clock stopped at a minute two, ball at the 40. Another first down for Grand. Grand winning in the first down category. Trout in the shotgun. Hand off to Elmore, up the middle. Elmore breaks around the left side, breaks another tackle and another one as he runs through tacklers, cross the 30 down to the 25 yard line. Trout's, get, Trout's gonna get out of bounds across the 25 yard line. Yeah, they're just trying to dominate this line right now and rushing hard. So that went down to the 24-yard line. 12 yards for Elmore. And now in the backfield, it's going to be Arbin who's, as Hunter Hafen wraps him up. So loss of three, and more importantly, the clock continues to run. And one of the rule changes this year is the referees do not rush to put the ball down. They do the same thing as always. So Langston will get off the field. Receiver to the right, down to 25 seconds. The ball is at the 27. Trout back to pass, under some pressure. Now the ball's up and away, knocked down, almost tipped into the arms of a receiver, and it'll be incomplete. Clock stop with 19.2 left. Yeah, not a lot of space there, and two guys on him. He's lucky they didn't get intercepted. Trout now one out of four in the game, rather one out of five for eight yards. So a third down and 14, 19.2 seconds left. And this one would have to be a quick pass to the sideline. So Trout will stay in the shotgun. 20 seconds on the play clock. Still no score from Timview High School. Beaver and Grand. Third down and 13. Trout back to pass. Looking left. Has the ball loose. And it's going to be almost intercepted. It is intercepted by the Beavers. And uh, Hunter down on the field. He's not moving much. But it will be a turnover. And Hunter actually had that ball, went down, and that was, it looks like a collarbone type problem. But as he made that interception, let's take a look at this. He kept the ball in the air. Yeah, and it pops up, and Williams gets oh, it. Oh, looks like an arm. It, but he's, he's using his left arm, but it looks like he landed right on that left arm. And Nate's going to put it in <laughs> slow motion. I didn't really want to see it. Let's do to back it up, and those of you who are ghouls can take a look as uh, 
Hunter made a beautiful play on the ball right here. You can see this. And I won't look. We'll did this replay sponsored by Beaverwood Medical Clinic. And uh, Trace and Hunter, one of the leading interception people for the Beavers. And he'll stay down in the field. We'll take a very short break and be back after this. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Sahara Motors has vehicle deals too good to pass up. Ask for Cody Winnie and he'll show you that all new cars are priced to sell at invoice or below. Did I mention the awesome used car selection as well? Oh yeah, I just did. Get your vehicle running the way it should with Sahara Motors team of Ford and Chrysler certified vehicle technicians. Newsflash, service techs from all over the state call the Sahara crew for help. So cut out the middleman and bring it to the source. Sales or service, Sahara Motors in Delta leads the way. Welcome back, Scott Lankford, Wade Hollingshead, and uh, Tracy the Hunter assisted off the field. Um, can't really tell. We'll, we'll try to get a, an injury update on the sophomore safety for the Beavers. As uh, I, I, I don't know who gets credit for the interception. I didn't see that. I think Spencer Williams came down so with it, and he Spencer he, Williams he brought the ball up a little, you know, ten yards or so, and then they got the out of bounds hit. So 8.8 .8 seconds left in the half. So both teams have stopped the other deep in the red zone. And that one, and there's an unsportsmanlike conduct call at the end of this one. And it'll be Riker Albrecht in the shotgun. Albrecht, hand off to Allred. Allred up the middle, and he will get about five yards, four yards rather. And that'll do it for the first half of play. It's a defensive battle from Timpview High School. And it's time for the Sunrise, excuse me, Jones and DeMille Engineering halftime. With Jones and DeMille Engineering, they support our youth and their efforts to develop new talent and passions paving the way to success. Best of luck to the rural teams. We'll take our first break. No score yet from Tempview High School, Beaver and Grand. Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. We offer quick service on your loan request. We make our loan decisions right here at the bank. You don't have to wait for an answer from some out-of-town loan committee. It's one of the advantages of banking with hometown people. You're independent, so are we. Utah Independent Bank, member FDIC. Hometown people, hometown spirit. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. It's time to supercharge your internet with the fastest speeds in the area from Centricom. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by Centra Wi-Fi, our whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Call or click Centricom.com to supercharge your internet today. School is back in session, which means cold and flu season isn't far behind. Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore has flu shots available, and most insurances pay 100% of the cost. Service Drug also offers immunizations for shingles, pneumonia, whooping cough, and others upon request. So don't let the flu leave you on the sidelines this winter. Stop into Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore today to get your flu shot. Again, it's not too late. Get it today. And remember, it's service first at Service Drug. 
You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the WASP the best of luck this season. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. So, welcome back. It is the Jones and Mill Engineering Halftime. From first downs to touchdowns, the Jones and Mill Engineering team is here to help you tackle the toughest infra infrastructure issue. And we appreciate Jones and Mill sponsoring the halftime. And uh, Wade, this one has been a defensive battle. And you, you take a look at the, starting, the start of the game. Grant took the ball at the first, resulted in a punt. Beaver had a punt. Grant turned over on downs, blocked field goal as the Beavers drove down and Looking for an affordable education. Grand then turned it over on downs. And then a punt by the Beavers, a punt by the Devils, a punt by the Beaver, and then an interception to end the half for the Beavers. And it basically, you know, both teams have had some opportunities. Both teams have, have missed a field goal attempt. Uh, Grands didn't get it up in the air because of the bad snap. But not a lot offensively happening. Not a lot of offensive happening, and that, I think that kind of bowls for Grand County's favorite, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're big up front, and in the second half down there, they come out and establish that and scored those 21 points. So this will be interesting to see what the Beavers do this first uh, uh, series of the ball uh, to establish some teams because it's definitely been just a defensive battle, and we'll see if Beavers are, are you know, in, in shape and up, uh, up to the, the task with their big front line. Well, we've seen a couple big plays by both teams. Um, a couple a couple runs that went for some some distance from both teams, but nothing really consistent in the red zone. Again, this is the Jones and Mill Engineering halftime. Jones and Mill applauds the teams for hard work, dedication, and commitment. The race for excellent has no finish line. And again, the winner of this game goes on to Weber State University next week to take on the South Summit Wildcats. Fourth straight appearance in the finals for South Summit, and the last three have been against the. The Beaver Beavers. So the Beavers trying to, they have one half to try to make it four in a row, and Grand would love to spoil the party and make their own appearance in that final show. We'll take a break on our Jones Mill Engineering halftime and be back with stats after this. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Sahara Motors has vehicle deals too good to pass up. Ask for Cody Winnie and he'll show you that all new cars are priced to sell at invoice or below. Did I mention the awesome used car selection as well? Oh yeah, I just did. Get your vehicle running the way it should with Sahara Motors team of Ford and Chrysler certified vehicle technicians. Newsflash, service techs from all over the state call the Sahara crew for help. So cut out the middleman and bring it to the source. Sales or service, Sahara Motors in Delta leads the way. 
Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. We offer quick service on your loan request. We make our loan decisions right here at the bank. You don't have to wait for an answer from some out-of-town loan committee. It's one of the advantages of banking with hometown people. You're independent, so are we. Utah Independent Bank, member FDIC. Hometown people, hometown spirit. Welcome back to Tim View High School. Scott Langford, Wade Hollingshead, Nate Palmer here as we have the second half of the semifinal matchup. And it's the Beavers and the Grand Canyon Red Devils. No score here at halftime, and this is the Jones and DeMille Engineering Halftime. Champions are propelled by dedication, teamwork, commitment, vision, and a desire to be their best, your local award-winning engineering firm, Jones and DeMille Engineering. So let's take a look at some of the stats. This is brought to you by State Farm Insurance in Beaver. And... Wade, we, we talked about it. Grant has had a, a better offensive production, but again, both teams have bent but not broken as teams have tried to get into the Beaver Valley Chevron end zone. No no score yet on this one, 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, neither team has really been consistent offensively. They both have some, some big plays, and they've got some yards and got down in the red zone, but uh, still offensively, both still struggling. And, uh, uh, you know, that's the first half. We'll see who comes out the second half and tries to change that. Well, as far as plays go in this one, you've got the Beavers – have run 18, 18 plays in the first half, and Grand with, let's see, 32 and 6, so 37, it's 32 and 5, but 37 total plays. Grant's had the majority of, of the balls. They've had a more sustained rushing attack. They have 10 first downs to Beavers 3, and I think the biggest difference in the game right now would be 5 for 8 on third down conversions for Grand, and only 1 for 5 for Beaver. Yeah, just, you know, just struggling, the, the Beavers are, you know, and I think that's a lot to do with Grand's line. They're just kind of big and they're strong. They're just kind of moving their way around with it. And so it'll be very imperative for the Beavers to establish that in the second half here. They do get the ball, you know, the first half here to see what they do on the, you know, offense side of the ball. And on the Grand side, they want to establish exactly the same thing, that same kind of momentum. Let's take a look at some of the stats. Rushing attempts, 13 rushing attempts for the Beavers, 65 yards. That's an average of five yards per carry for the Beavers on the rushing side of the ball. For Grand, they have 32 rushing attempts and they have 156 yards, so they've, they've more than doubled up the Beavers, averaging 4.8 yards per carry. And then on the passing attempts, the quarterbacks on the passing attempts, Albrecht is 1-4-5 and Trout is 1-4-6 with an interception. And the Beavers have 11 yards passing, eight yards passing for Grand. And the total yardage for these two teams, Grand 164, Beavers just 76. So Grand has has a definite edge in the stats, 20 yards of penalties for the Beavers and only 10 for the Red Devils. Yeah, you know, Grand probably feels a little shaded there because they are dominating the game uh, offensively, but they still haven't put any points on the board. So Beavers ought to feel pretty lucky there to still be 0-0 zero, zero, uh, at, at halftime here. And so both teams are going to have to come out and see who, who you know, I think who makes the less mistakes less turnovers will win the ball game. Well, that would be the keys to the second half, sponsored by Beaver Valley Hospital, high-quality health care at a community hospital price. Let's take a look at some of the individual stats now for the Beavers. You've got the Beavers' leading rusher with, with almost 850 yards in the season. Riker Albrecht, the junior quarterback, has minus eight yards in that first half. Yeah, I just know where to run for Riker. They've kind of bottled him up quite a bit. He's had, he hasn't really got to, to see the outside or the inside. They've been – Grant's played great defense on him. And then Caleb Barney, the, the junior running back, he has 550 yards on the season, and Barney with only two in the first half. Yeah, you know, you talk about that uh, three-headed monster for the Beavers. It was uh, Albrecht and Barney, and then they throw Spencer Williams in there a little bit. EJ, obviously, the sophomores run really well for them, and he has the big, the big you know, run play for 52 yards. Other than that, there hasn't been much production offensively for the Beavers. Yeah, the, well, the, and the offensive production it comes on the back of sophomore EJ Allred as he has 71 yards, including that 52-yard carry in the first half. So Allred really carrying the majority of the Beaver offense. Of the 76, he has 71 yards. And there have been a couple big sacks also that have taken the Beavers' losses of 11 twice. 
for the Beavers. On the grand rushing side of the ball, Elmore, he has eight carries, 30 yards, and then Bryant Trout, the junior quarterback, with 72 yards on 14 carries. Corbin Arbin chipped in 54, and he has that on, on 10 carries. So right now, things shaded towards the Grand County Red Devils on the offensive side of the ball. One, one turnover, kind of a, a turnover that might be costly for the Beavers, depending on what happens with Trace and Hunter. Um, but kind of an end-of-the-half turnover for the Beavers. Yeah, certainly they were just trying to throw a pass at the score. It wasn't like it you know, made a huge difference in the game. Um, but, you know, Grand does look like you know, all three of those runners, those yardages, are, I would assume, are pretty good for, their, for a first half for them. And so they're probably feeling pretty confident coming out here in the second half. Well, as we take a look at it, you've got Arben, Trout, and Elmore who are averaging six, well, for a total yards for the season, 600, 800, and 700. And in this game, they've got 30, 72, and 54. So probably near their averages in this first half. That'll do it for the Jones and into Mill. Jones and DeMille Engineering Halftime. When we come back, we'll have second half action from Tim Few High School. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. It's time to supercharge your internet with the fastest speeds in the area from Centracom. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by Centra Wi-Fi, our whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Call or click Centracom.com to supercharge your internet today. School is back in session, which means cold and flu season isn't far behind. Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore has flu shots available, and most insurances pay 100% of the cost. Service Drug also offers immunizations for shingles, pneumonia, whooping cough, and others upon request. So don't let the flu leave you on the sidelines this winter. Stop into Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore today to get your flu shot. Again, it's not too late. Get it today. And remember, it's service first at Service Drug. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasps the best of luck this season. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. Just welcome back, Scott Langford, Wade Hollingshead, and Nate Palmer here from Tempview High School. And we're excited to bring you the second half of the 2A semifinal matchups between the Beavers and the Red Devils of Grand County. And it's a scoreless affair, so it's a defensive battle, more like a, a hockey or a baseball score than a football score. But uh, we saw this at Grand last time, and it was the Grand County Red Devils that, that exploded in the second half. And now it'll be whichever team established momentum as we take a look at this, the South Creek Shell second half kickoff. South Creek Shell offers more than 1,200 tires in stock and Burger King and a whole lot more. Appreciate South Creek Shell. But let's take a look at the keys of the second half. And I'm not sure they're a whole lot different than the first. Well, I think it's for both teams. They want to establish offensively and, and score some points. I think they put some yardage up. They want to score some points. 
but uh, they got to limit the penalties and the turnovers, which hampered both both squads from scoring. And for Grand County, Grand County, I think, you know, I, you know, it's the same. They, they're going to continue the exact same thing offensively: run the ball, uh, wear down the Beavers, and they got to score some score some points. Well, again. the size of that offensive line for Grand County is is a big deal as far as the second half, as as defensive line get lines get tired. So it's second half kickoff here coming for Grand. And I believe Wells will kick, Dante Wells will kick for the Red Devils. And back for the Beavers will be Creighton Hollingshead and Hunter Carter. So Trace and Hunter not on the field. He looks like he's walking around doing okay. We'll see if he's in the game. And there's a short kickoff going to be taken by Preston Roberts on left side of the 20, 25 yard line. He has a nice lane up across the 35 yard line. And a good return for the Beavers. Field position starting at the 37. Yeah, tackle harder there by number eight, Trent Elmore. Uh, the senior just kind of putting uh, some uh, knockdown on the Beavers so far today. So pretty consistent starting field position for both teams right around the mid-30s. And we'll see if the Beavers can get something going offensively. One good drive for the Beavers in the first half. Other than that, it was the defensive line for Grand. Albrecht, option to the right side, pitches out to... Barney, Barney hitting the backfield, loss on the play, and there will be a flag that comes in late. That's either in a block in the back or a, or a unnecessary roughness. We'll see what the call is. Could be either one. Oh, it looks like it's a block in the back. So it'll be 10 yard penalty back, and that'll be right about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, block in the back against the Beavers, so another 10 yards for the Beavers. In this game, that is now 30 yards in penalties for the Beavers, 10 for Grand County, moves the ball back to the 29, 24 yard line. So now the, the Beavers have a first down. And let's see, from the 24, they have to get out to the 48. So first and 24 for the Beavers. Yeah, just what we talked about, the penalties in the, mm -hmm. and we saw from the second half here. And it's a handoff, this one's gonna be to Allred. Allred gets a couple yards, call it five. On first down, second down and long. You know, trying just to get some positive yards there to kind of uh, get some the ball upfield a little bit. Tough run by EJ. Yeah, two two ball tacklers, 81 Bailey Shelton, and then Christopher Thompson as well. The two seniors combined for the tackle. Second down and 19. Handoff up the middle again. Oh, that goes nowhere. Stopped. Right at the line of scrimmage by that big defensive line of Grand. Yeah, just kind of uh, throwing around their weight there and just uh, nowhere to go there for uh, Allred. So third down and long. Neither team wants to be in a third down and long, both both running teams. And Grand will probably bring some heat on junior quarterback Riker Albrecht. That big defensive front for Grand. So split out to the left will be Spencer Williams and Preston Roberts. Albrecht in the shotgun, back to pass. Screen play coming. Here it is to Williams. Williams with a big lane. Gets the corner and gets inside. Going to get back past the original line of scrimmage to about the 30, excuse me, the 41 yard line, but not enough. Great play there by Spencer. Just uh, needs a little more spacing, more blocking downfield to pick up that first down. So on second down and 20, they got 15. So 15 for. Albrecht on the passing side and for Williams with his first reception of the game, but not quite enough. It'll be McCoy Smith back to kick for the Beavers. Smith kick is up. Nice high kick. Goes back to the 22-yard line. Fair catch by Grand. Beautiful punt by Smith. So Grand holds serve in that first possession of the second half for the Beavers. They have the ball on the 22 yard line where they'll take it first down and 10. Just a reminder, we're going to have a sub of the game sponsored by Timberline Inn. Enjoying the tantalizing dishes from the finest chefs in Utah and professional catering from Timberline Inn at the I-15 South Interchange in Beaver. They do a great job. So Trace and Hunter probably out with a concussion from what we hear from the sideline. And so it'll be Hollingshead moving back to safety. So Graham with their sec first offensive possession in the second half. Elmore with the ball, big hole falling blockers. And he just picks his way forward. Nice job. Ten yards for Trent Elmore. Yeah, just picks his way there and gets, a, and gets another first down for Grand County. So Elmore with his ninth carry of the game. 
as he gets 10 and another first down. Grant had a 10-3 advantage in the first half on first downs. And the big offensive line just leading ahead. And you've got uh, Trout, who also leads on that block, hands off and then goes. So a lot of blocking for Grand. Trout in the shotgun. And it's Elmore in motion. Fakes a handoff. Here's Arbin. Arbin pushes forward. He'll gain six yards on first down. It'll be second and four. Yeah, host attack was there for the Beavers. Hunter, Hunter uh, Hafen and 13 McCoy Smith. So the grand offensive line right now with the advantage on the line of scrimmage as they're getting five and six yards per carry. Second down and four. 9-18 left in the third. No score here from this semifinal matchup. And Grand with the ball. First possession of the second half. Trout stays in the shotgun with Arbin in the slot. All 11 players there. Trout goes around. Not much there as he gets pushed backwards. Loss on the play. Yeah, Beaver sends somebody on that play, and they were able to stop him quickly. And that was number uh, eight, Brighton Langston, on the outside. A little linebacker blitz. Yeah, minus two on that one. So bring up third down and six for Grand at the 8.45 mark of the third quarter of play. A reminder, the winner of this game will take on South Summit next week at Weber State for the 2A state championship. Trout in the shotgun. And he will hand off Elmer now Arbin around the right side. Nice block by Trout. Turns and Arbin will be taken down. Not much on that one. It'll be fourth down. And good pursuit on the Beaver defense. Yeah, just great pursuit there by Preston Roberts to string that out and not allow him to get the outside there, and they, they were able to, to, hold, to hold serve. Yeah, just a gain of one on that play, so no conversion on the third down that time for Grand, and it'll be a punt formation. Wells back to kick for the Red Devils, and Spencer Williams, they call him the Spider-Man, back for the Beavers to receive the punt. Kick is, snap is low, but it's nice. Now it's going to be a fake punt, and uh, Wells in a little bit of trouble. Comes around the right side. And he's going to be hit hard by Williams. Now, he might have got forward. Oh, there's a player for the Beavers who was out. Big hit on the field. Roberts, I believe. And we'll take a look and see if Roberts, what a big hit by Roberts. And Roberts down on the field. The senior cornerback, is, it was a huge hit by the senior. And Roberts down on the field. We'll take a short break while they attend to the player. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Sahara Motors has vehicle deals too good to pass up. Ask for Cody Winnie and he'll show you that all new cars are priced to sell at invoice or below. Did I mention the awesome used car selection as well? Oh yeah, I just did. Get your vehicle running the way it should with Sahara Motors team of Ford and Chrysler certified vehicle technicians. Newsflash, service techs from all over the state call the Sahara crew for help. So cut out the middleman and bring it to the source. Sales or service, Sahara Motors in Delta leads the way. Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. Welcome back. Still taking a look at Roberts. Let's take a look at the fake punt. So Wells goes to his right, and uh, McCoy Smith turns him backwards. And then Wells around this left side. Roberts comes up. Big hit. And Wells keeps his motion. He gets down to the 38-yard line. Great spot by the officials, and that is a first down. And Wells, let's take a look at the fumble one more time just to see when that ball actually came out. We are. And Roberts coming off the field. And good to see him walking under his own power. I think they were just making sure he was okay. So Wells comes out. We'll just go to the end of this one real quick. Appreciate Nate 
doing that. And the ball definitely down. And so the officials got that one absolutely correct, and it's Grand with a first down, the ball on their own 42-yard line. Hard to question those guys sometimes. When you watch yeah, it back, they yeah. were correct on all, on all of them. Now it's an inside handoff. Fooled everybody. Gain of eight on first down. That one went to number 40. I think Thompson. that ball was a direct snap to 40. Yeah. So a little bit of a surprise for 40 as he, as he got that one. EJ already done a little tackle on that one. So a gain of seven. And it'll be second down and two for Grand. And now the Beavers down two players now on the cornerback and safety position. It's going to be Trout around the left side. Trout close to the first down, and he might be just a little bit short. Gain of one. Yeah, Brighton Langston and Hunter Hafen on that one. Stop him short. Yard to go for third. 16 rushes in the game for Trout, 71 yards. So it'll be third down and <laughs> a, a one yard for Grand. 6.44 left in the third. No score in this one if you're listening on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network as it's been a defensive battle. Neither team able to put it into the Chevron, Beaver Valley Chevron end zone. So a big third down coming for Grand. Third and one. Elmore and Trout. And it's going to be Trout on the left side. First down and a whole lot more as he breaks into the secondary across the 40, down to the 36-yard line. And so for Trout from the 49 down to the 36, 13 yards for the junior. You know, just uh, once again, the offensive line just creates a hole for Trout and picks his way through and picks up the first down. So almost 84 yards in the game for Trout. The ball's first and 10 at the Beaver 36-yard line. What's the impact of the defensive players out for the Beavers, Wade? Well, you know, it's, you know, the Beavers are they're young, and so it brings in more youth, I think, a little bit. And people haven't been playing certain positions, so it makes it a little difficult. And it's a double handoff. Arben falling to a big wall of blockers. Arben breaks forward, across the 30-yard line, down to 27. Near first down yardage again, gain of nine on first down. Yeah, Grand County will take nine yards every, every whack if they can get, continue to do that. They'll be happy with that. So now Grand with – they crossed 200 yards rushing as compared to the Beavers, 96. Grand starting to establish the momentum in this one with their first possession of the second half. It's second down and one. And the fake, fun, fake punt paying off for Grand. Trout with Arbin in motion. It's going to be handed off to Elmore. Elmore up the middle. And again, great blocking up front. And a gain of five on second down. Will be another first down for Grand. You know, this is the long, wearing out drive for Grand. And, you know, it's putting a, putting a toll on the Beavers' defense right now. Definitely so. The ball's nearing the red zone. The ball's on the 23-yard line. No score. Five minutes left in the third. It's a first and ten for Grand, deep in Beaver territory. So Arbin in the slot. And Elmore next to Trout in the backfield. Trout hands off to Elmore. Around the right side, follows blockers. Taken down. And a gain of two. So Harris on the tackle for the Beavers. Trent Elmore has 47 yards rushing in the game. 446 left in the third. No score. The winner takes on South Summit, who will play in its fourth consecutive state championship. Some of those, some of those kids have played four straight. Some of the seniors have played four straight. Four years in a row for them. Second down and eight. Trout stays in the shotgun. Arbin motion. It's a handoff. Trout keeps himself. Goes around the left side. And cuts back, makes a nice cut, gets inside the 15-yard line, near a first down, gain of seven. Yeah, he's got lots of blockers out there. It's just tough to find him, and then he skirts in behind somebody. And a trait made, Trout made a really nice break right here. All of the momentum going to the left, and uh, he does a really nice job cutting back against the grain, found the hole, and he had a, a big gain. Third down and one, ball's on the 19. Cam Grand continue the momentum and turn this one out. It's a third and one. Christopher Thompson, the fullback in front, and now it will be a penalty on Grand, and it'll be five yards back. So instead of third and one, it'll be third and six. Well, we'll see if the penalties mess up Grand County's potential scoring drive. Yeah, we've seen both teams make mistakes or have losses on plays deep in the, in the red zone. 
And now Grand facing that third and six, probably four down territory, although Wells can kick it from this distance. So it'll be third down and six. Same formation, Trout hands off to Arbin. Arbin in the backfield, hit, loses yardage. He'll lose two, it's fourth down and seven. Yeah, Talon Langston comes in there, makes a one-handed tackle, doesn't let him go, and brings him down. Yeah, Langston, the senior defensive lineman, makes a nice play with that one with his, as he knifes in and snags Arbin in the backfield. So now fourth down, what does Grand do? The, from here it would be a, a 38-yard field goal for Grand. It looks and like they're, they're going to go for the They are going to try it. So they'll kick it from the 28-yard line. So that's a 38-yard field goal attempt coming for Wells. Snap is back. Good snap. Kick is up and looks good and is good. Grand, first on the board, 3-0. Precious points and maybe may prove to be a big big thing here in this game. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it, with a 38-yard... 38-yard field goal, and what a great kick. That one could have gone for more. Yes. So a 38-yard field goal for the Grand as they take the first lead at the 249 mark of this third quarter of play. So we, I wouldn't have expected it would have taken that long to get to get this to get the first score. Well, you know, both teams had opportunities the first half, didn't weren't able to convert. Once again for the Grand here, they're driving down, have a penalty, backs them up. Well, I mean, you know, for them, they got this field goal, so we'll see how the Beavers respond now for them. You know, you got to look at that penalty, though, as what we talk about penalties being one of the keys to the game, but that penalty, you know, stopped a possible touchdown opportunity at third and one. But either way, Grand, a sigh of relief on the board above, over the Beavers, three to zero. And a kickoff coming for Wells. And back for the Beavers will be Hollingshead and Carter. And it looks like Preston Roberts is back in the game. Yeah, Roberts is back in the game. We haven't seen Hunter which is likely out with a concussion. So precautionary for, for Hunter. Trace and Hunter, the sophomore safety for Beaver High School, plays on the defensive side of the ball. And now Wells set with the kickoff after making the 38-yard field goal. And Wells with kickoff, deep kick. That one will go into the end zone. Touchback. A little bit of wind behind, and Wells with a nice kickoff. Yeah, he got all that leg into that one. There's no chance to return there. There's in the end zone. So now the Beavers have a chance to establish their own momentum. And the junior quarterback, Riker Albrecht. The Beavers have struggled on offense tonight as we take a look at the stats, sponsored by State Farm Insurance. Um, 214 yards for the Grand County Red Devils, 96 for the Beavers. So well below their season average. Barney split to the right, and it's a handoff to Allred. Allred up the middle, and a good gain on first down. Call it six, and it'll be... That's where the Beavers have second down and four. Well, so far, you know, Grand's been able to stop that run, which allows Beavers to throw a little bit. And so when they, if Beavers can get a little running off going here, they may open up their passing game a little bit for them. Yeah, if you're a Beaver fan, one remarkable stat so far, uh, Riker Albrecht, only five rushes in the game, Barney only one. EJ Allred with 11. The Beavers have been three and out on most of their possessions. Second down and four, handoff to Allred. Allred hit in the backfield, and he will gain one. And they'll say the ball's on the, on the ground. We'll see if they call it as a turnover. And it is. The Beavers cough it up. Grand picks up the turnover. You know, I didn't really see that. A lot of guys there on the ground there. And uh, turnover it is. Let's take a look on the replay as, as Allred goes into the middle. Yeah, the ball was loose. Hard to see exactly when it came out. We'll have Nate take a look at it. But I couldn't tell at all. So the Beavers cough it up on their first turnover. And that comes at the 211 mark and gives Grand a great opportunity to score. They get the ball and it's on the Beaver 27 yard line. And here's a rush to the left side. Here is Arbin and he gets down near the 20. Yeah, just a lot of wall blockers there again and just continue to pound it out, which is what they want to do, the clock mm -hmm. to run now. Yep, five yards for Arbin as he breaks 70. He has 73 yards in the game. Now a second down and five coming some substitutions for the Beavers. Well, a minute 43 and counting left in the third. It's 3-0 Grand, and they're nearing the red zone. Ball's at the 22-yard line. Trout in the shotgun. Elmore with some motion, handoff to Elmore up the middle. Excuse me, Arbin up the middle across the 20 to the 15. 
Takes it down to the 14 yard line. And that was a gain of eight. On well, the first down for Grand County and they're just kind of imposing their will right now mm -hmm. on the Beavers. Yeah, starting to establish the dominance on that offensive line. And a minute 28 left, Grand. The size of the offensive line, definitely a mismatch. And Grand starting to, to control the line of scrimmage. So it's first down and 10 inside the red zone at the 19 yard line, excuse me, the 14 yard line. And Trout stays in the shotgun, Arbin in motion, handoff to Trout, keeps himself up the middle and pushes forward for a gain of approximately three yards. Yeah, EJ already on the tackle on that one again. So the ball's down at the 11, under a minute to play in this third quarter of play and some substitutions again for the Beavers. They got defense a little tired, so trying to bring some fresh bodies on the field. Hand off to Arben. Arben tries to break on the left side, and he'll get inside the 10, down to the nine. It'll be third down for Grand. Yeah, Spencer Williams in on that tackler comes up, makes a good stop on Arbon. So Corbin makes it third down and five. 18 seconds left in the third. See if Grand gets another playoff. You know, if this is a field goal opportunity, they want to be going this way with the wind. Certainly. But it looks like they're not going to get this playoff. They will not. They might get this playoff, but they wouldn't get another. So third down and five. Trout takes it on the left side. He'll run forward and get near first down yardage, very, very close at the five. Looks like he's going to be just short. Looks like the spot's going to be about a yard short. So he's going to gain four yards on the carry. And so it'll be decision time as we end the third quarter of play. It's 3-0 Grand, Grand threatening when we come back. The Intermountain Power Service Corporation is proud to bring you this presentation. IPSC is a community-minded company that contributes to our local schools, community organizations, and economy. The Intermountain Power Project consistently ranks among the best of America's coal-based power plants in reliability, cost-effectiveness, and environmental responsibility. Intermountain Power Service Corporation strives for perfection and is honored to be actively involved with Delta Millard and Juab High Schools. It's time to supercharge your internet with the fastest speeds in the area from Centricom. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing and surfing and fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by Centra Wi-Fi, our whole home mesh Wi-Fi system. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Call or click Centracom.com to supercharge your internet today. Fourth down and two, four grand. Fourth down and one, it looks like. Hard to say. Ball has to get to the four, so it's fourth down and two. And Grand will go for it. No field goal team in. They lead 3-0 as we start fourth quarter action. Three down, one to go. And Trout will stay in that shotgun. Big down for both teams. Arben in motion. And now the Beavers will cross the line of scrimmage, and that will result in a first down for Grand, and it is. Encroachment, offsides on the defense. So another penalty weighed, and that one extremely costly. Well, the penalties and the uh, turnovers are kind of uh, paying the big half for the Beavers so far. So we first and goal. The ball's on the three-yard line. And so Grand looking for their first offensive touchdown of the game with a first and goal at the three. And it's going to be Trout in that familiar formation with the Thompson, the fullback, Arbin in motion, and it's going to be a direct snap to Thompson. Thompson pushes forward, does not get into the end zone. Second and goal from the one. Yeah, they did that same play they did a few, a few uh, series ago. They got a pretty good yardage on it. Beaver's not full today on that one. So two yards for Thompson. And so it'll be second down and goal. And Grand content to, Grand content to run the clock. They've got a second and goal ball at the one. They lead 3-0, looking to make it 10. Just underway in fourth quarter action. Trout takes a snap, runs forward, follows his line of blockers. Looks like he's in four. No sign yet. We'll see what the call is. Still nothing. Still no call from the officials. And they're talking about it. Still no call. 
Okay, and we're going to have a third down. Well, you know, the Beavers actually that. had the ball. Preston Robert has the ball in his hands. So it will be third down and goal as Trout gets no yardage on that one. Not sure what happened with the fumble. So it will be third and goal from inches. This is where that big grand offensive line has an opportunity. Elmore, and it'll be Trout pushing forward, dives in for the touchdown. So Trout with a one-yard touchdown score, and Grand finally on the board with a touchdown. That drive started on the 27, and 10.57 left. They have a 9-0 lead over Beaver High School. Wells yeah. will come on for the extra point. Just a lot of uh, upfront presence there for the Grand. They just kind of have done that in the second half here so far. <laughs> so that'll be Wells back to kick the extra point. And it'll be Trout with the hold. Uh, kick is up. Looks good. Is good. 10-0 Grand when we come back. School is back in session, which means cold and flu season isn't far behind. Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore has flu shots available, and most insurances pay 100% of the cost. Service Drug also offers immunizations for shingles, pneumonia, whooping cough, and others upon request. So don't let the flu leave you on the sidelines this winter. Stop into Service Drug in Delta and Fillmore today to get your flu shot. Again, it's not too late. Get it today. And remember, it's service first at Service Drug. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. The number one seed, Grand County Red Devils, up 10-0 over the Beavers. And uh, both, both scores come in the second half. Scoreless at half. And now Grand with that 10-0 lead. And in a game like this, that might be insurmountable as the ball will go at the 10, be picked up by Hollingshead. Hollingshead has a big lane, goes around the right side, has the sideline, goes across the 35-yard line, and a good starting spot for the Beavers. Yeah, great return there by Hollingshead. See the offensive lead now. Can Beavers can uh, establish some momentum. So the Beavers struggling with offensive production. Only 78 rushing yards in the game net and with the 22-yard loss. But even so, 245 now for Grand as the size starting to wear on the Beaver defense and many more plays. Reich Robrecht back to pass. Looking to his left. Has a receiver overthrown intended for Spencer Williams. Yeah, just, uh, you know, Beavers got, you know, put a little urgency into this offense now due to being down 10 to nothing. Yeah, the receiver was open. And it was covered by Elmore. And just a little bit wide of the mark, second down and 10. Clock stopped with 10.45 left. Again, Grand 10, Beaver, no score. Roberts and Williams split to the left. And it's going to be a handoff to Allred. Allred ahead, and it's going to be Allred ahead, but it's going to be all for naught as there's a flag on the play, and it'll be in the area of holding. Yeah, certainly the penalties have just racked up for the Beavers this game and this half has just killed their momentum offensively. So that will be a 10-yard penalty. So it is a block in the back against the Beavers. So instead of a gain of 15-16, it's going to be a loss of eight on the play. So a 10-yard penalty for the Beavers. You know, it's interesting, you, I've seen that call twice now on the line of block in the back. It's usually a hold. The block in the back seems a little unusual of a call there. Let's take a look at the play. The oh, Okay. So second down, and there'll be 18. So a loss of eight officially, a penalty of 10, though. So that'll be a gain of two for Allred on the carry. And Allred nearing 100 yards. He's been the only bright spot so far on the Beaver offensive production side of things. Edwards and Williams split to the left. Albrecht, hands off to Allred. Allred again, this one no good. No good hole that is. Three yards on the carry, he'll be third down and long. Yeah, just a tough call there. Just uh, Grant almost read that and we're waiting for it and just mm -hmm. all going to the ball. Yeah, a little misdirection by the Beaver. Struggling running up the middle. And Kai Brown will bring the ball in, excuse me, the play in from the sideline. Third down and 15. 
9.53 left in the game. Beavers down 10-0 with an important third down play. Albrecht in the shotgun, and there will be a flag on the play. Looks like there will be a false start. Another mistake by the Beavers. And this has been the Achilles heel for this Beaver football team all season long. 50 yards in penalties and only 15 for Grand. Certainly adding up here in the second half. So now put it third down and 24, I believe, or 23. The ball is on the 26, and they have to get out too. So it's 24. Third and 24 for Beaver. Albrecht back to pass. Has a pass to Roberts. Through his hands, out of bounds, incomplete. And it'll be punt formation for the Beavers. Yeah, just tough there when you got to go 20 yards to get a first down. Yeah, even with the catch, that ball would have Roberts well covered on the play. So it'll be McCoy Smith coming on for the Beavers at the 940 mark. And he'll be standing inside his 15-yard line to get this punt off. Snap comes back. It's a good snap. And Smith with the kick is up. And he will go down. So a flag on the play. A fair catch by number nine, Joey Cloud. And we'll see what the call is. If it's a roughing the punter or running into the kicker. Personal foul, roughing into the roughing the kicker. Now I'm not sure that's an automatic first down. Should be. So roughing is an automatic first down, so the Beavers catch a big break, and that penalty on Grand is a costly one for the Red Devils. It breathes new life in the Beaver offense. Certainly not what Grand wants to do is to give new life when you have them almost snuffed out. Grant's played a very good game on the penalty side of the ball. And that one definitely a first down for the Beavers at the 41-yard line. Williams and Brown split to the left. 9.34 left in the game. Beavers down two scores, 10-0. Albrecht back to pass. He rolls to his right. And he's going to throw the ball down in the middle intended for Allred. And no one there incomplete. It'll be second down. You know, that play was covered. They was looking for this mm -hmm. back pass to, Trent, to Caleb Barney, and uh, it was covered well by Grand, and so Albrecht had nowhere to go with the ball. So Albrecht threw it safely between the defenders. Second down and 10. Clock stopped at 9.26. Left in the game. 10-0 Grand. Edwards and Williams to the left. Albrecht alone in the backfield, and he'll run uh, to the left. And he just runs into good pursuit by Grand. Two yards on the carry. And Albrecht, who averages almost 100 yards a game, just can't get anything going against this Grand defensive line. Well, they just established it both offensively and def uh -huh. defensively, and they've just uh, really made it tough for the Beavers today. Well, Grand's lone defeat was, a, was, a, was kind of a disappointing loss to Enterprise during the region, during the region. Enterprise, the sixth seed out of the 2A South. Enterprise a good team, but Grand pretty much rolled over everyone else. Albrecht under heavy pressure, rolls to his left and throws the pass up. Roberts there, it's going to be intercepted, and they're going to call a flag. This, if this is pass interference, it will be a first down. It was intended for, I think, Preston Roberts. There might be a little push off on Preston Roberts mm -hmm. on number, uh, who was governing number nine. No, it actually would be against Joey Grand. Cloud. Oh, and a player down four. Braden Trout down four, Grand. And a little concerning as we take a look at Trout. And we'll wait and see what the call is on the field. Trout rolls over. Trout's pass interference against the defense. That'll be a first down. That'll be a first down for Beaver High School. They're going to get a player. We're going to take a short break while they attend to Braden and see what hopefully he'll be getting up. We'll be back. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasps the best of luck this season. 
My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Sahara Motors has vehicle deals too good to pass up. Ask for Cody Winnie and he'll show you that all new cars are priced to sell at invoice or below. Did I mention the awesome used car selection as well? Oh yeah, I just did. Get your vehicle running the way it should with Sahara Motors team of Ford and Chrysler certified vehicle technicians. Newsflash, service techs from all over the state call the Sahara crew for help. So cut out the middleman and bring it to the source. Sales or service, Sahara Motors in Delta leads the way. Great news, we see Braden Trout getting up off the field. Initially, he's, this is his first game back from injury, the middle linebacker for the Grand County Red Devils, and he gets a nice hand and not putting a whole lot of weight on that left leg. Not sure exactly what his injury was before that he's coming back from, but uh, he's definitely not feeling well right now. We wish him the very best of luck. He's played a great game in his return for the Grand County Red Devils. So it was pass interference against Grand. So the second penalty, second costly penalty for Grand keeps the Beavers' hopes alive as they have the ball first down in Grand territory. And it's going to be Albrecht with a handoff to Allred. Allred around the right side has a blocker. Barney ahead. And Allred, Allred goes across the 30-yard line down to the 25 and a first down. Yeah, just a great play there from the Beavers. Get a little momentum going for them offensively. 43 down to the 19. So 24 yard run. Oh, excuse me, to the 24. So a 19 yard run for Allred. And the Beavers with the first down. Albrecht stays in the shotgun. And it's handoff to Allred around the left side. Allred trying to get loose. What a great tackle in the open field by Elmore. Yeah, it just comes up, number eight, Train Elmore comes up, makes a great open field tackle, the senior. Yeah, minus three as he just planted the sophomore all red, and it's a loss of four on the play. You know, he stays home, doesn't get fooled there, and just makes a great, you know, experienced play, senior play. Eight minutes left in the game, 10-0. Grand County on top of the Beavers, trying to move on to take on the South Summit Wildcats. Albrecht in the shotgun, back to pass. Albrecht has a pass, it's almost intercepted. That one not open at all, and it'll be third down. Yeah, well covered there. Probably shouldn't have been thrown because he was, you know, two guys on him and yeah. luck it was intercepted. Yeah, knocked down. And so we third down and 14. Definitely four down territory for the Beavers. With 7.54, the clock stopped after the incompletion. And the Beavers will have to hustle to get this one off down to 14 on the play clock. Interestingly, you know, when we see the play clock, usually we see some delay of games, but haven't seen any today. Albrecht in the shotgun with third down and 14. Back to pass, has protection, and now is on the run. And he'll try to get some yardage back, and he'll be sacked as he's going to lose another four yards. And Grand with good coverage. Yeah, just good coverage, nothing really to go there. You know, I like to see the Beavers receiver, though. When he starts to scramble out, maybe come back to him and give him a little, op, you know, a little of a target there, you know, help, help him out a little bit. Yeah, minus five on the play, so it'll be fourth down. And long, the ball's on the 32-yard line, and they have to get inside the 15 to the 14. So it's third, fourth down and 18 for the Beavers. So we'll see if Grand decides to bring the heat, and still struggling to get into the Beaver Valley Chevron end zone are the Beavers, and they've got a fourth down and 18. Albrecht back to pass, good protection. Albrecht lobs one up, all red near the end zone, almost. 
a reception, can't quite make it, and it'll go over to Grand on downs. Just a hair long. EJ right there, great, great play call there. Yeah, there's the replay, as you can see, right there at the hands, perfectly thrown, and a tough catch, but Albrecht puts it where he needs to. So now Grand with the fate in their own hands now as they will take the ball on the 32-yard line. And if Grand can get a good one good possession, and this game will be over, and Grand will move on to play the South Summit Wildcats. Right now they lead 10-0 with 6.58 left in the game. Trout stays in the shotgun. Trout will hand off to Elmore. Elmore shifts and he's, he's hit, he, and the ball's loose on the ground, and we'll see, it looks like Grand might have recovered. The ball was loose, and you don't see any jumping around, so I'm guessing Elmore recovered his own fumble, and he did. So it'll be Elmore, and the ball will move. So no gain on the play, it'll be second down and 10. You know, the ball's gotta bounce away a few times too, and so far <laughs> it's bounced Grand, Grand's way. Yeah, it did, as it went back to the player. So second down and 10. 6.24 left and counting. Grand in no hurry as they have the 10 point lead and the ball at their own 32 yard line. Trout will take all of the play clock and he'll run to the left. And he'll go into the linebacker position. Gain of five or six on second down. Third and short coming for Grand. Most importantly, the clock continues to run for Grand and that's uh, exactly what they need. Yeah, a couple first downs, and there won't be enough time left. It'll be four yards, so six yards on the carry for Trout. With that, Trout goes over 100 yards at 105 on 23 carries. Third down and four. And again, Trout will wait until the very last second. Down to 10 is the play clock. 5.35 left. Hand off to Elmore on the left side. Elmore with a big hole into the secondary. First down across the 45-yard line. And he'll get down to the 47. So a gain of nine for Trent Elmore. Yeah, just picking his way through that offensive uh, defensive line there and picks up the yardage for the first down. So now 5.23 left in the game. South Summit defeated the Millard Eagles 34-10. And uh, that game was interesting all of the statistics in that one, Millard had more yards than South Summit. They had 30, 30 first downs compared to South Summit's 14. And net total offensive yards, 428 for Millard, 375 for South Summit. But all the big plays went to the Wildcats. And here's Trout up the middle on first and 10. And he'll get a very short gain on first down. Call it one. In that game with Millard and South Summit, Six missed opportunities in the red zone. We'll take a timeout as Beaver stops the clock with their first timeout. Smithfield Hog Production Division offers excellent career opportunities right here in our area. For a career with growth potential, come join our team. Great jobs in all phases of animal production starting at $12 an hour and certifications to $13 an hour in the first year. Smithfield provides a full benefit package including medical, dental, vision, 401k, life insurance, paid time off, and more. Click on smithfieldfoods.com forward slash careers or call 435-387-6000. That's 435-387-6000. Smithfield, good food responsibly. We offer quick service on your loan request. We make our loan decisions right here at the bank. You don't have to wait for an answer from some out-of-town loan committee. It's one of the advantages of banking with hometown people. You're independent, so are we. Utah Independent Bank, member FDIC. Hometown people, hometown spirit. Second down and eight, Arbin around the left side. As he tries to get the corner, he gets the corner and a bunch more. He'll get a first down across the 40 into Beaver territory as he goes from the 48 all the way down to the 40. A flag so fly, but I guess not. 12 yard carry for Corbin Arbin. And Arbin now nearing 100 yards. So you've got Bryant, Bryant Trout with 106 and Arbin with 95. So Corbin with a nice run. And this three-headed dragon we talked about with Trent Elmore, 56. And then Arbin with 95, 106 for the quarterback. They're, they're doing what they're supposed to as seniors and the junior. First and 10. Clock's down to 445 left in the game. 10-0 grand over Beaver. 
Trout in the middle, and he keeps it in play. Gain of almost four, and another timeout taken by Beaver. A Fish Lake Lumber timeout will take 30 seconds and be back. It's time to supercharge your internet with the fastest speeds in the area from Centracom. Get ready for high gear downloads that power buffer free streaming, gaming, sharing, and surfing. And fire up all your devices at once with reliable speeds amplified by Centra Wi Fi, our whole home mesh Wi Fi system. Get on the fast track to a powerful online experience. Call or click Centracom.com to supercharge your internet today. All together at Southern Utah. Welcome back. Scott Lankford, Wade Hollins. We were just talking to Coach Matt Wells and uh, Beavers coach Steve Hutchings um, played on the same Southern Utah University football team in college. So, I didn't know that they're, either. yeah, they're good friends, know each other quite well. Second down and six for Grand with 440 left. They lead 10 to 0. And the handoff middle, Elmore. Trent Elmore breaks tackle across the 30 near the 25. And Grand continues to chew up the yardage. And this sustained drive is spelling doom for the Beaver season. On the first down, just continues just to uh, pick up yardage and wear down the Beavers. <coughs> so a gain of nine on that one as well. Elmore to 65 yards on the afternoon. And the ball is down to the 31-yard line. 4.27 left in the game. It's been a dominant performance by Grand. The score is not, the defense for the Beavers has played well, but Grand is slowly just pulling away, slowly and steadily. A lot more plays in the Beavers. Sustained drives Trout up the middle now. On first down, another gain of four or five. It'll be second coming up. Another timeout by the Beavers. Yeah, so Hunter Hafen, one of the big seniors, and McCoy Smith, the two, two of the leading tacklers for the Beavers. And Wade, we'll just keep it here as the gain of seven. And as we take a look at this one, you know, Grant has played very, very well. And you can see that the size and the leadership has made all the difference. Well, you know, certainly Grant has, you know, five or six, maybe even seven or eight seniors on the team, and that just kind of bodes well in the experience. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of come through the second half especially, and their size just kind of wore down the Beavers, and the Beavers made some mistakes, and that's probably due to being physically beat up a little bit, I think, by Grand. Yeah, I've been very impressed with the offensive and defensive lines for the Red Devils as they have really managed the line of scrimmage very well all game long. And some substitutions with fresh bodies for the Beavers. Sec second down and four, 406 left in the game. 10-0 Grant. Motion for Arben. Arben takes it around the right side, cuts back, spins, and will go down around the 15-yard line. I think that'll be another first down for the Red Devils. Yep, call it five yards on second down. So that moves the ball down to the 16-yard line. And methodical offense on this drive. This drive started on their own 32-yard line. Chewing and, up the clock. And yep. And now in the red zone at the 16. So Brian Trout will take the snap in the shotgun and hands off to Elmore. Elmore up the middle, just steady pushing and steady yardage for Grand as the ball moves down to the 12. So three yards for Trent Elmore. Beavers out of timeout, can't stop the clock, I don't think, anymore in the second half. So now the Beavers will have to count on a turnover. And I guarantee Coach Matt Wells is, is telling his players, you've got to fold your arms over that football, not allow any, no turnovers here. So the ball's at the 12. 10 seconds left on the play clock as Grant comes up to the line. Trout takes a snap, and he'll take the ball up the middle, and he'll go down inside the 10, and he'll be third down at the nine-yard line. So a gain of three for Bryant Trout. And that is rush number 26 for Trout. That's a lot of rushes That's for old, well, He's only a junior, correct? Yeah, junior. Yep, junior quarterback. I believe Elmore and Arbin are both seniors for the Red Devils. Let's make sure. Arbin's only a sophomore. 23 is a senior. Oh, yeah, senior year, right? Yeah. And now there will be a penalty on Grand. So that will be five-yard penalty. And that now both teams, ironically, even in the penalty category, both with 50 yards penalties. 
And so it'll be third down and eight. With 2.18 left in the game, this one's all but locked for Grand to stop Beaver Streak. And by the way, I was, was corrected. Six straight championship games for the South Summit Wildcats. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought it was three, but it was actually six. So this will be their sixth straight rather than three. Big thanks to Danny Beard for that one. So now it'll be Trout with a shotgun snap. Third down, and it's going to be a handoff to Elmore. Elmore takes one big step in. Inside the six, down near the five. Not enough for a first down, and it'll be a fourth down for Grand. So the clock will continue to run down to a minute. And I'm, we'll see if they let Dante Wells kick another field goal or if they say let's just run this run this out with fourth and one. I'd leave my offense on the field. Yeah, I'm certainly that's what Matt Wells is going to do. Maybe even try to draw him offside with the hard count. So Elmore with four yards. So fourth down and one, a minute 22 left. Grand has this one in the bag. There's a snap to Trout. Trout keeps it up the middle, and he'll go down inside the five-yard line, down to the three. So four yards for Trout on his 26th carry, 27th carry, and it'll be first down and goal. And, and Grand doesn't even have to run another play if they, I mean, they could do victory formation at this point or run it in. And Coach Matt Wells talking to the troops as he's waiting down to 10 yards. 10 seconds on the play clock. And it'll be Trout in the shotgun. And he will take a knee. Great sportsmanship by Coach Matt Wells and respect as that will do it for the game. Interestingly enough, in eight quarters of football, Grand did not allow the Beavers a single offensive touchdown. Single, single touchdown or a single score. Yeah, a single score. And so the defense of, the, you know, as, as we look at this one, as a game between the two defenses, Grand defense has done an exceptional job this season against the Beavers, and they will be playing for the state championship against the South Summit Wildcats. And you have to give Grand all the credit. You know, they came in with a game plan. They didn't, they just stuck with it. They used their offensive line, their defensive line, and they just uh, wore the Beavers out. They certainly did. And now Grand, as they celebrate, the players on the field pretty excited as they will go on to play in the 2A state championship game next week at Weber State against the South Summit Wildcats. And that does it. Time runs out. It's time for the Sunrise Engineering post game, And we'll take a short break and be back after one minute for the Sunrise Engineering post game. You've seen Zions Bank's name at sporting events, performances, and fundraisers. We're just about everywhere. Your children and grandchildren see Zions dedicated employees in their classroom, teaching them how to save. We do all this because we have skin in the game. We support South Central Utah because we live and work here too. So we're as committed to this community's future as you are. When it comes to choosing to bank at Zions, rest assured you're selecting a company dedicated to bringing value to South Central Utah's businesses, individuals, and families. ZionsBank.com, member FDIC. National Vinyl Products of Nephi has been a part of Juab County since 2004. The management and staff take pride in supporting the students of Juab High School in the game and in the classroom. The company manufactures high-quality vinyl fencing for a host of uses around the state. If you're 18 years of age and would like to join the workforce at National Vinyl Products in Nephi, please send an email to jobs at nvpfence.com. That's jobs at nvpfence.com. The entire staff and crew at National Vinyl Products wish the Wasps the best of luck this season. My name is Richard Anderson. I'm one of the general surgeons working at Central Valley Medical Center in Nephi, Utah. My trajectory was not into surgery at first. I decided to become a research scientist, but I had no opportunity to work with people. Since moving to this area, I have made lasting friends, lifelong friends, and I have enjoyed providing the same sort of quality surgical care that they can obtain in Salt Lake or Provo, but with more prompt and certainly more personal service. How many first downs total for the... Welcome back. It is time for the Sunrise Engineering post game. Serving communities like yours all over the western United States. Sunrise Engineering. You can check them out at sunrise-eng.com. We're taking a look at some of the stats. And in the first half, you know, the, the Grand County Red Devils had really you know, put on a clinic as far as just grinding it out. No scores, though, in the first, in the first half. But in the second half, it was... You know, Grand really dominated and owned the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And uh, a couple of interesting things, Wade, that we talked about off, off 
the break is in the first half, the Beavers run 17 plays. And in the second half, the Beavers run 15 plays. 0 for 3 on third down conversions. And it was just a dominant performance by the Grand County defense. Yeah, Grand County just, just didn't allow Beavers to get going. And they uh, Beavers had some penalties plus the turnover down here the Grand, uh, you know, caused that to allow them to score the touchdown. And so they just come out second half just kind of like down in uh, – in Moab and uh, established their 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 uh, offensive dominance on the line and scored the 10 points to win the ball game. Well, and the the Grand County holds the Beavers to under 100 yards rushing for the first time this season as they allowed 95 yards rushing total as compared with 309 for the Red Devils and uh, they definitely earned this 10-0 victory. This is the Sunrise Engineering post game. We're growing and we're hiring. Visit us at sunrise-eng.com to learn more. As we take a look at the at the rushing totals, as we look at the stat check from State Farm Insurance, the totals for the Beavers, the only real offensive spark at all in the game is 104 yards for E.J. Allred, the sophomore, you know, eclipses the century mark, but he is the only one with any positive yardage. Two for Caleb Barney on one carry, and Riker Albrecht, who averages over 100 yards per game, minus 11 for the for the contest. Yeah, I just couldn't get it going there. Just a tough, tough uh, on the line there, just a... The big man up front for Grand County has put a lot of pressure on Riker. Uh, you know, EJ picked up 104 yards, but 52 of those yards on that one big play. And so, you know, it's just a tough day, you know, for the Beavers. And you got to give Grant all the credit. Absolutely. And we talked about Grant's rushing as they had the three-headed dragon of Trent Elmore, Bryant Trout, and Corbin Arbin. And the three didn't disappoint as Trent Elmore ended up with 70, 72 yards on 16 carries. The workhorse of the game was Bryant Trout, and he had 27 carries, 121 yards, and then Corbin Arbin finished exactly at 100. So between the three of them, they have 293 yards rushing. Yeah, certainly that's what Grand wanted to do, and they did that. You know, they were able to establish their run, and, you know, they're very good at it. They have a very good offensive scheme there with a lot of misdirections. You can't quite see the ball sometimes, and they just did a great job today. So the final stats in the game, the rushing yardage, 317 for the Grand County Red Devils and 121 for the Beavers. Both teams with 50 yards in penalties, one turnover apiece for each team as well. We'll take our final break on our Sunrise Engineering post game, come back with players of the game and more. We'll be back. Looking for an affordable education? Come check out Snow College. Snow has the lowest cost tuition and housing in Utah. In fact, you can live in student housing for less than staying in your parents' basement and attending a university. At Snow College, it's all about you, where you get an individualized education and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors in very small classes, even as freshmen taking general eds. Come check out Snow College and see why it's one of the best two-year schools in the nation at snow.edu. Welcome back on the Sunrise Engineering Post Game Grand 10 Beaver Zero. They advance to play South Summit next week for the 2A state championship. So it'll be a fun game of red and green. Uh, it, yeah, I heard Christmas music on was playing after November 1st. So it'll be a, a red and green affair up at Weber State University. So a lot of fun to see. Sunrise Engineering promoting athletic and academic excellence. Visit us at sunrise-eng.com. we got a couple of players of the game. First of all, let's talk about the key play of the game. And I think the key play of the game was the 48-yard field goal, 38-yard field goal by Dante Wells, which kind of started, started the action for the Grand County Red Devils. Well, it kind of gave them the momentum they're looking for. I think once you get on the, you know, the, on the scoreboard, it gives you that momentum off offensively. And then that very next series, they forced a fumble and they scored again. So just two big plays in a row there. For expert real estate advice and accounting services, call Gary Brown at Coldwell Banker Advantage Realty and Majestic Financial Services. And so Dante Wells, our Coldwell Banker, is responsible for our Coldwell Banker key play of the game. On our sub of the game, we're also going to give that one to number 34, Braden Trout. Unfortunately for the for the junior, um, his first game back, he ends up with another injury. He's favoring his left leg, so we want to wish him the very best going into next week's championship matchup. And the junior middle linebacker is the Timberline Inn sub of the game. And Timberline Inn here offering fine dining and a catering service, the Timberline Inn in Beaver on the South Interchange. And then our player of the game, sponsored by Mike's Food Town, will be the quarterback, the junior, Bryant Trout. He has 121 yards on 27 carries. And the junior just did a great job of that constant running, grinding it out, and he's leading his team into the 2A state championship next weekend. Yeah, just a great game by uh, Bryant Trout. Just uh, did exactly what he was told to do by his coach and uh, executed, executed a well offensive uh, performance for him tonight. So good job by him. 
All right, that'll do it for us here from Timview High School is the Grand County Red Devils and the South Summit Wildcats. That's, that is slated for the championship next week at Stewart Stadium on the campus of Weber State University. So you can watch that one and take a, take a ride up and watch it in person. And we'll have it also on local10.tv for you to watch. And that's a wrap for the Beaver season as well. Appreciate all of our sponsors who have brought you to a high school football on the Mid-Utah Radio Sports Network and on, on Local10.tv and the Beaver Sports Network. Hope you've enjoyed this season. We certainly have. And uh, the Beavers wrap it up in a semifinal matchup on a, in, a, in a growing season and a rebuilding season. I did not predict the Beavers would end up 8-4 and four on the season, and uh, I certainly thought that they, they achieved probably more than I expected. Yeah, I certainly know they're a young team, and they got a lot of kids coming back for next year, so it should be exciting for them next year also. And we'll have basketball coming up here shortly, so that'll do it. For Wade Hollingshead, Nate Palmer, I'm Scott Lankford. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to exciting high school football action on South Central Utah's sports leaders, Mid-Utah Radio and Centricom Channel 10. This sports broadcast has been brought to you by sports-minded sponsors throughout South Central Utah. Join us next time for more exciting high school football action on Centricom Channel 10 and Mid-Utah Radio.